Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Bargain Bin, a show about speedrunning games all under $20. I'm Midnight Vesper, and I'm going to be your host for this amazing show. Now, if you're new here, a couple, th couple things before uh, we get this started. For more current slash digital games, we're going to be using digital stores like Steam, GOG, itch.io, Ubisoft, it's Epic, etc., to look at the list price of each individual game. For old school games, retro games, we're going to be using the website pricecharting.com and looking at the loose price of that particular game. We do not count any, any sales or discounts as they vary at the time of purchase. A couple announcements real fast. Information on all of our Hotfix shows is available at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. From there, you can find out more information about submitting your runs to any of our shows. And if you're watching this on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please, con please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. Also, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. Also, your subs, gifts, subs, Amazon Prime subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support our weekly Hotfix content. Thank you so, so much for supporting all of our shows. Now, on today's show, we have three amazing games. First off, we have Fable of the Lost Chapters, slated currently at $9.99 on Steam. Then we go retro old school with Captain Skyhawk, currently at a loose price of $2.30. And we're going to end our show with the amazing Ori and the Blind Force Definitive Edition for $19.99 on Steam. Not, not including shipping and handling, you can get all of these games for around $35. But don't forget that The Bargain Bin isn't the only show on tonight. Right after our show is Speedruns from the Crypt, bringing you all that spoopy horror loveliness. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this amazing night. Big Law, my friend, how are you doing on this fine, fine day? I am doing quite all right. Thank you for asking. I'm excited for this game. <laughs> I am too. And uh, with me also I have my friend Adam. Would you like to say hello? Hello. Hi. Yes. Hi, I'm Etem. <laughs> I'm helping. All right. So this is Fave with the Lost Chapters, any percent. And we'll just load into this save right here. Just make some just timing a bit easier for uh, our good friend working the tech. So there's this cutscene. We played this game a lot. We know what this cutscene is. So we're going to start the timer in three, two, one. Go. All right, so this is Fable Lost Chapters Any Percent. So the first thing you're going to see here is that we're rolling everywhere rather than running. This is for a few reasons. The main one is that it's faster than running, and we can also use it in tandem with other movement techniques we'll develop throughout the run um, to go even faster. So starting off here, we're going to beat up this bully, which gives us a good deed. So basically the, the tutorial map of the game, you have to do good deeds to, or bad deeds to get your sister a present. You basically just need three gold pieces. We can do good deeds or evil deeds. We're doing two good deeds and then evil deeds. So we have gotten a teddy bear from this bully. We're going to return the teddy bear to its rightful owner. So drive by drop off to our good friend over here. Yep. Then we're going to speak to our dad and get our two gold pieces. And then we are going to conduct an evil deed for our third one, which is uh, this person here having extramarital affairs. We take a bribe of one gold to keep our mouths shut. And this has a side effect, so we've done a bad deed. This has a side effect of making the guards chase us. Um, so there's two guards that can potentially catch us, so Big Law is going to try and avoid them to the best of his abilities. It can be a little bit annoying sometimes. Sometimes they just got, like, laser vision and they go straight in. So that's the first one. As long as this guy doesn't turn around, we should be fine. Ooh. Cool. Easy as And that. as a side note, uh, the effects detail of this game is at minimum because it causes flickering. That's why the water looks like blue soup. Sometimes you need a little bit of blue soup. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. So we've given our teddy bear, to, or we've given the chocolates to our sister, and then there's a freak candle accident and the village is on fire. Um, and we just need to travel up here. There is a strat you can do, which involves hero saving and loading, which is faster, but it has the very teeny tiny side effect of completely disabling saves. So as you can imagine, if the game crashes, we go right back to the start. So we are not doing that here. So we find our father is dead and it's very sad. Our sister and mother are missing, which is uh, exciting. 
not exciting at all. Um, so we've been rescued by our friend Maze, who is not a traitor. Um, we have a Guildmaster, who's also a magic man. We have Whisper here. We don't like her, so we punch her twice. That's not for fun. That's set up for a trick later that's going to save a minute. It just so happens that Whisper is there. There'll be more from her later. Yeah, so we'll be making our way over to the Guildmaster now, performing our first bit of a... Uh... Uh, guild education uh, would be <laughs> beating up this dummy real quick. So just <laughs> throw some punches. Yeah. Not not doing a whole lot. Not making much of God, John Faye will have some technique. Yeah, so now we have the stick, and with that we can effectively slay this uh, this dummy right here. Ah, mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to have our first quest, which is slay the beetles, which sounds really easy because each um, each beetle takes one hit to kill. There's ten beetles. Um, unfortunately, the beetles like to mess up the targeting system um, because of how they jump up and fly around, um, so it can be a little bit annoying, so uh, if he whiffs a hit, it's not his fault, we promise. And he's going to try and aim for getting as many as he can in one Ooh. hit. Let's have a look. These are some, some choice spawns by the beetles, but hopefully we can manage. Ooh, Ooh all right. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Oh. Very good. Oh, very good. All right, that was a pretty decent beetle. The beetles are all dead. You can come out. So the guildmaster now. says the beetles are all dead, but last I checked, Paul and Ringo are still alive. So. Uh... Yeah, he needs to his uh, Wikipedia on. Yeah. Get out of bed, lazy bro. Oh, there's more whisper. We'll see her in a sec. And um, the rolling is pretty difficult. Also, um, there's some apprentices here and they can mess up your movement because they like to all just crowd around they, in the stairs. Yeah, they just all kind of spawn in the uh, the tavern there and they yeah. start to congregate towards the uh, stairwell, but fortunately we managed to get through without much of an issue. Cool. So we're doing the melee training, which is just hit Whisper seven times, then Blocker hit seven times and then... Uh, and then uh, just beat her in a bat battle. So um, you'll also notice Big Law's going to be rolling forwards here, just to ensure that um, because she gets knocked back every time she um, hits you. Yeah. Ooh. This bit is a little bit of RNG. Oh no! Nice. All right, good recovery. Ooh. Excellent. Good stuff. Whisper initially blocked there, and usually we can get some shots off on her, but fortunately we were able to. Get her to jump, try and jump behind us and just chain some hits on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is where us hitting Whisper earlier comes into play. So he's going to say, I'll oh, see how many targets you can hit in a minute. But um, the guild has a four strikes rule, so after four strikes, he tells you off. But then he lets you skip it. He's like, oh, hey, what are you doing? But then he's like, oh, yep, no, you're done here. That's what us hitting Whisper was for earlier. And then we go do the same thing here with a zap. Yeah, so just uh, do a quick zap and then uh, shoot the Guildmaster four times and we'll be done with the lesson. So, yep. I'd say it's like nearly a minute two and a minutes, half, which is yeah. very good. I feel like we've learned a lot. We don't need this training. Graduate. We're well educated. All right, yeah, so. Yeah, moving um, on. We'll be. Sorry, I'll take care of this. Uh, we're moving on to the final test, which is the fight with Maze. And it has three components a melee, a ranged, and a will part. Uh, for the melee part, hopefully he'll spawn in a good spot. Uh, it's not great. Uh, we want to try and have him be as close as possible so we can just chain some hits on his back like we did to Whisper earlier. But where, he's, where he teleports is a bit RNG, unfortunately, so... Shoot those arrows, now we can move on to the last segment, which is the will segment, and he's going to teleport again. And we got to zap him seven times. Nice and easy. That's enough. Good job, Maze, Mr. Not a Traitor. Yeah, he's definitely not a traitor. No ill intentions with him whatsoever. He's a very no. kind individual. Yeah. Cool. Right. So we're going to uh, get our first upgrade, um, which is going to be a spell called Assassin Rush, which zooms you forward. And we go also do a glitch called Hotshot Glitch, which is found by Hotshot Wire, which is going to let us double by the upgrade. So. 
Hovering over undo and buy, he has just bought Assassin Rush twice. Um, which is going to zoom him even more forwards, which is good. Um, it also works as an XP saving mechanic, so it's very useful all around. So, um, we're already a zoomy gamer and we're just out of the guild. So, first quest here, which is Wasp Queen. Ooh, nice. Um, you also just demonstrated a feature of Assassin Rush, which is the zip feature. So, if you rush towards someone that you're targeting and you're close enough, you'll zip behind them. Um, you'll zip towards, or you'll rush towards anything that you're targeting, which includes things behind you, so, uh... Yeah. Start by zapping the wasp, and then we'll zap another wasp. Um, so this is actually a new strat that was found a week ago by me, um, which is that you can hold target while targeting, um, to cycle through targets really quickly. We're going to start off by attacking the wasp. Um, as a note, most bosses in this game have something called health phases. Um, so, like, after a certain amount of damage taken, they won't take any more damage, and they'll do something like they'll do an animation or they'll spawn some enemies or something, um, which is why Big Lord didn't start immediately attacking the wasp queen after he hit him with the arrow. Um, so, yeah, a lot of bosses will have that, so it's just a case of working around them. Yeah, it's not uncommon to see bosses have um, different phases to them and just left waiting for them to advance to the next stage. Uh, but now we're going to be moving on to uh, Bowerstone and we'll be talking with uh, Maze, not Trader Man, and yeah. be told about our uh, just next place to go. Just a bit of a tip where uh, our sister Teresa may be. Yeah. Um, we're also going to be breaking the economy a little bit a lot. So, um... Essentially, when a trader has an item in bulk, they'll sell it to you for really cheaply, which you can buy in bulk, and then they'll have none of the item, which means that they'll pay more for it because they don't have any. So then you can sell that item for a bulk price back. So uh, we're going to see this in action here. So we start off at 570 gold. We're going to sell some potions for initial gold. We're at 1400, making up that number. Buy apple pies and grain sacks. Ooh. Ah, you're fine. And then you'll sell uh, the apple I'll pies just, and uh, grain sacks. I'll just buy the uh, pies again, just to yeah. be safe. And just by buying and selling, he is currently at 2,700 gold with change to spare. Um, so we just got free money, so uh, thanks, trader. Yeah, the, uh, the economy in Albion is absolutely inflated to hell. Like, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to buy a house. Um, yeah. It's, it's not good. Yeah, not good. Cool. And then we just bought an ebony bow, which is much more powerful than our existing bow. That's going to be useful for the next quest. I think that's the only time we use it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, previously, we would use it on the uh, uh, certain encounter a bit later on, but uh, we've changed the route since then, so... Hey. Yeah. The route has gone through a lot of changes, so I've been around since... 2013 and it's a completely different run to it was than when it was back then um speaking of run we're not going to be able to rush here that was a bad segue and i'm sorry um so the wasps <laughs> here i'm sorry <laughs> um the wasps right. here are a perfect example of um an example of an enemy that you can't rush behind or rush with so right now your targeting is behind you that means if you try and rush you'll just rush backwards so in this case it's faster to roll than rush because otherwise you'll just go backwards yeah, I was able to uh, get some lucky soft targets on those wasps that were ahead of me, so I was able to yeah. get a bit of rushing in, but it's not something you're going to see very frequently if you're being chased by a wasp. Yeah, the um, there's a bit of RNG here in terms of whether the wasp will aggro you and how nice they play and what you had for breakfast that morning. It's terrible. There's a lot of micro RNG in this game of like very small things like enemy placement. But fortunately, we got through there without too much of an issue, so we should be good. Mm -hmm. um, so this quest here is a good example of the combat multiplier, which is basically your combo meter. So the, uh, the thing that's now a number that I can't see because the stream is a quality for me, that's a six right now. Um, that's your combo meter, and it goes down when you either take a hit or you just let it decay over time. So that's why 
Big Law is zapping our guard, friends. So Big Law needs to A, not get hit, and two, sustain his combat multiplier. Yeah, so I'm just kind of uh, dispersing the uh, shocks between these guards because mm -hmm. you don't want one of them to die because that'd be yeah. a bit bad. Not yet, at least. Um, and yeah, the, com uh, the combat multiplier is useful because all XP you get is multiplied by that number. So in this case, we're getting 11 times the regular XP, which is a, a rather high number. Nice, good stuff. So our goal here is 12 multiplier, which I think you should get with no problems at all. Yeah, so this fight against uh, Whisper is supposed to be really tough, but since we have a bow, we're just kind of cheating it. It's sort of like a mini boss fight. Cool. You have reached so rather than going straight back to the guild for our next quest, we're going to um, head forward a few maps because basically the way teleporting works in this game is that there's a few set maps that um, that you can teleport to, and the next map, uh, the next quest takes place later on. So we're just going to head over a little bit so we don't have to backtrack in a bit. Yeah, I tried to go for a rush there, and that wasp was right on my butt, so I was not really able to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Some bandits have set up a toll in this region. Be careful. So we're going to skip some dialogue, but just by zapping this bandit friend, and that uh, annoys everyone here, but we're just going to roll through, try and avoid the uh, Albion firing squad, which are more dangerous than they appear. Yeah, um... Uh, range of damage is actually pretty high in this game, like from NPCs, so it's very important to not get a, a random shot off done on you. Also, I'm going to clear up these inventory slots real quick. Because we're going to go get some upgrades. Mm -hmm. um, I won't explain all of the upgrades, otherwise we'd be here till uh, HDQ 2022, but there'll be one in particular that uh, will be important, but... Let you do all the upgrading first. Physique allows you to do more than ah. Speed makes you quicker in both ranged and melee combat. Magic power increase. All right, so we picked up uh, Berserk, Multi Strike, and uh, Summon as our spells. And uh, summons is actually a pretty important spell in the speedrun. You may not think of it as a very powerful spell, but it has quite a lot of use. And you'd be wondering, yes. why are we going to the Chamber of Fate? We have to continue on with our quest. Well, Big Lord, this is a nondescript map. There's nothing in here. Yeah, so you know how at the end of the game where Jack of Blades is just trying to get the Sword of Aeons? Well, it turns oh. out it's actually just in the floor, and we can just, you know, grab it immediately. So That was a very clean clip. Um, yeah, so the Sword of Ends is just kind of chilling under the floor for the whole game. Uh, it does 230 damage. For context, our last sword did 30. Um, this is a quite broken sword, so we're going to just use this for pretty much the rest of the game. And we also, um, just transferred our summon. So when a summon kills a larger enemy, it turns into that. Um, the way that trick works, basically, is that your summon is a portable hitbox, and with the zip feature of Assassin Rush, you basically ignore the hitbox of the stairs and just zip under the floor. Um, you can do that at home as well, it's really easy. There's a few tutorials on it, so uh, if you want to just break the game, go ahead. But yeah, we've uh, changed the hitbox to a bandit, which will be more useful for other um, upcoming uh, nondescript gates and walls and such. Uh, typically, we would talk to this trader man. Eh, he's. Oh, I'm just gonna talk to him. Yeah. I was gonna do just... a, a, a slick headshot on him, but I didn't quite have the angle right. Mm -hmm. So I'll let him fall for the meantime. Mm -hmm. He's a friend. Also, I'm gonna take a take a. Oh, I thought that was a potion. That's the potion. <laughs> uh, just gonna have that potion just to be safe. Never hurts to be safe. Mm-hmm. All right. So there's a Balbrain and. Uh, they're just like danger puppies. You want to stay away from them because they will uh, <laughs> bite and scratch you. They're very, very mean like that. Um, also, two things something... to explain. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Two things about the spells. First of all, Assassin Rush is very broken in that it um, gives you iframes for about a second, which is how he's able to zip through these spores. The reason we're using Berserk, we've not explained why we're red and very angry and why there's loud breathing noises. It's not me. Um, 
Basically, Berserk is a super, super broken spell. It, let me see if I can remember all these. It increases your attacking speed, your rolling speed, your attack damage. You can't die while in it. And any damage you take will be, uh, will increase the amount of damage you do. So all around, it's a useful spell all around. You can attack with it, you can move with it. It's just very good. Um, yeah. Also, a fun fact, a lot of people don't realize this, but like the, the cloud thing is actually like an angry face. Um, like the berserk angry cloud thing that has a, that you have around you. Yeah. Um, I also just killed my uh, traders there that I was supposed to be escorting uh, <laughs> because that means they will talk a lot less in the uh, the trader camp there. And whenever the uh, traders start moving is when we we're able to go to the next area and have them follow you. So that was purely to save time. And I'm terribly sorry that I had to kill those innocent traders. It's all right. It's for the greater good. I do like the idea of this is a trader escort. Escort these traders. It's like two of them died on the way. I killed them. I mean, no one has to know anything. Ah, yes, it's our secret. Apart from that one guy, he's a witness. But okay, here's the Earth Troll here. The context we was doing about 200 damage a hit before. This tr Earth Troll has about 2,000 health. Um, and now we're doing about 200 damage per sword swing. That's 2,000 health gone very quick. Yeah, so that was nothing. Mm -hmm. Also, a fun fact, if you uh, leave a trader in the uh, swamp, they'll uh, tell you to go back and get them. So you can't just like tell one to wait and then just bring one through. Yeah. So. Right. so I'm just going to quickly utilize this man's bedroll. Please don't mind. Thank you. Yeah, so this and is going to reset the... Quickly use this man's bedroll. This Thank is going to reset the day and night cycle because in the next town, um, we're going to want to do some more buying and selling here. So if you thought that us getting 3,000 gold quickly was uh, good, uh, keep your eyes peeled for this. I'm going to try and explain it to the best of my ability. So he's going to trade, buy all the perfumes, sell all the perfumes for 8,000. You, you with me? Do it again, 13,000. Buy all the emeralds, 27,000. Buy some potions, buy the emeralds, sell the emeralds. 40,000. So that was about 40... Uh, we went up by about 35,000... 20 seconds? Yeah. Um, this is going to be the second to last lot of buying and selling we'll be doing. Um, but this will be enough for now. We basically need it to buy a bow and some potions and a few bits and bobs later. Yep. Also, you may be thinking, hey, there's a gate here. You're not meant to be here. You need to go back to the guild and get the quest. Well with our handy dandy summon and some pausing for effect and a little bit of setup. Ooh. There we go. You can clip through that gate. So now we're in a map earlier than we're intended to be. Um, normally you're meant to go through here and avoid bandits and pick up the pieces of bandit gear. But we're not going to do any of that. We don't need the bandit gear. We don't need the bandits, the Albion firing squad firing on us. Um, we're just going to make our way through. So it's it's not only faster and more efficient, but it's also like safer. Like I I remember back in the day where you would just get absolutely demolished by the uh, the archer bandits. Yeah. So this is the only real like sequence break we have in the run. Uh, the quest system is actually incredibly robust and like not very easy to break. Yeah. Like everything else is broken. The, the quest system incredibly robust, like unbreakable. We have like dev confirmation about how robust the quest is we uh we've had a few devs roll by including the uh, the lead designer who is an excellent person so we're going to start the quest here and we're going to start smack dab in the middle we actually never start it so if we return to this map later the game will like freeze a little bit unless you do a whole bunch of uh shenanigans yep so this guy says oh you need the bandit gear to come in but do we i, I think we just need to have a, a bandit that has the gear. I think that's what we mm -hmm. need. We are the gear. Please, my son. Clips can be a little... Uh, yeah, this one's little the, probably the most difficult of the lot. Nice. For, that was a good first clip. try. First try. We're just showing how not to do it. Yeah. Classic we like, boozle. We like an angry red Sonic the Hedgehog rolling around here. Yeah. Pending it's the Legend uh, of Zelda. 
Uh, something that has not been brought up is that I've been picking up these potions, uh, the Ages potions. And uh, yes. there's three different versions of them, and each one will give you 1,000 experience uh, multiplied by your com combat multiplier of the specific uh, uh, attribute, I guess. Mm -hmm. So there's skill, strength, and will. Yeah, so, so we're going to use that potion. later on once we uh, have a high combat multiplier, which will be uh, pending. That's a bit. That should be good. There we go. Nice, good stuff. Um, so here's the first real boss fight of the game, which is Twin Blades, and his gimmick is that he can only be damaged when his swords are jammed into the ground properly. So you remember how I said that um, you can't die in Berserk, and any damage you take will be increase the amount of damage you do. Um, take note of that. So you remember before how long it took us to kill the rock or the Earth Troll to do 2,000 damage. Um, we're going to be doing uh, well. Uh, Windblade has about 2,000 health, so... And he just <laughs> lost 2,000 health. <laughs> um, yeah, we're quite strong for this part of the game. Yep, so... We are now done with Twinblade, despite never having actually started the quest, and we'll be going back to the guild. Quest done, jobs are good, and... Um, it's Mission also good because, yeah, um, there is a bug that could happen both here and at the start of the game called Big Kid Glitch, um, where all the hero, all the heroes, like all the sizes of all the characters, go to one one like individual size, and like all the music stops, the sound breaks, the game comes way more unstable, and we call it Big Kid Glitch because like the first symptom is that like if you do it during like the childhood segment, the hero just sprouts up and it's just like super swole. Yeah, you actually turn into like a literal man child. It's kind of horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, we speak to Mr. Not a Traitor here. He needs you to do not a traitor things. Um, we also bought a Master Longbow, um, which is going to be useful for the next upcoming quest where Archery is our friend. So we'll be rolling along and we'll come across our first ever rock troll, but we will not really fight him. We'll just kind of do a bit of a, a little bit of a slip through the legs. Yeah, the game's really like, oh yeah, yeah, no, you need to kill this guy. He has like a health bar and everything, but nope, you can just walk by. He's even, he'll even show up later. Yeah. All right, now the Witchwood Stones. Uh, typically, you would figure out this uh, demon door's name through a bit of a puzzle. His name is... Uh, Hits. Spoiler alert. But let's just there. Please. The clips can be uh, yeah, a little a little tricksy, but first try every time. First try. Excellent work. Excellent. Mission accomplished. Fish and mailed. Anyway. Fish and mailed. <laughs> um, similar to what we did in Orchard Farm, we're going to head forward a little bit to the next town because that's where the next quest takes place, just so we unlock that colour skate to teleport to. Um, we're just going to be rushing through here at the uh, at the speed of sound, or about how, how fast Rush is, I don't know. I don't know the Albion to human units. <laughs> yeah. I see someone has posted the alternative name for uh, the Demon Door in the chat. Uh, uh, fun fact, if you do post that, or if you do... Uh, make that name out in the game, then some Balmarines come and attack you and punish you for being a naughty person. Yeah, no, this is a family show. We can't do that here. And it's also slower. But it is funny. Yeah, that's... Uh, there's a... There's a nymph. Nymphs are terrible. Nymphs are the fastest enemies in the game. And yeah, they just ruin your day. And they laugh at you while doing it. So it's a terrible... Uh, case in point. Yep. Your backdash like mad. Like I berserk IRL a little bit whenever that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we have made it to not hold blade. Unfortunately, we do not have the trading card game quest card. That means we can help them, so we have to go back and get the card. Uh, and we'll also grab some upgrades while we're here. Yep. 
Yeah, we're going to increase our uh, accuracy to increase our archery abilities and physical shield, which I'm sure if you've played this game, you remember it is the bro other broken spell in this game. When you have it up, any health you take will be instead be taken out of your mana. The main thing is that it means you don't take damage and you conversely you don't lose multiplier. So um, it means that even if we take a hit, we can still retain our combat multiplier, which is super, super useful. Yeah. Um, so starting off here, there's uh, some Balverines outside the town, which we need to kill. There's four of them, and they're one after the other. Um, the way you spawn the next one, you just look away. Um, I say this took us a long time to find, but I've been saying that since 2016. It took us about a year to find, and I've been saying we, we spend more time looking away than we have looking at them. But at first, we thought it was RNG of like, oh, wh how do they spawn? No, literally just look away from the screen. I'm just trying to get a little bit of XP there. And now like, here comes the... Okay. Oops. <laughs> There's the white Balverine. And we just have to zap him a bit, 10 times in fact. Yeah, he, so he takes give... hits from anything and lightning is the fastest thing. There was also a big risk there because uh, lightning has a tendency to crash with certain camera angles because video game. I don't think I've ever experienced uh, that crash before, I'm going to be honest, but... You've I'll gone and done it now. It's going to happen in the next 10 seconds. Oh no. I don't like the way this camera is zooming. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, so we're just shooting the Valvrine to uh, skip an animation. And yeah, now we have the like... silver augmentation. And with that, we will equip it to our longbow and then go meet up with the Valvrine in the front of town. Yeah, he has a super long animation where he like starts howling, goes, oh, and then like. Yeah, how? So we just skip that whole thing and just make him jump. That was a stellar impersonation, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, available for weddings. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on, we'll now be uh, uh, going to uh, fight the White Balverine, face off against it. And uh, yeah, it'll be a, a swell time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to uh, snipe the Balverine, hit the Balverine, and then uh, hit the Balverine. Yeah, so Not to be confused gonna, with the demon door hits. Draw a back and go for this sick MLG long shot. Boom! <laughs> Fucking. <oop. laughs> that's my that's my one swear. I apologize. That's your one. Fre freaking got him. G Willikers, my friend. <laughs> G Willy. Uh, so we're gonna hit the uh, Balverine. <laughs> I apologize. It's all good. Um, we'll shoot the Balverine one more time and then he'll be dead. Awesome. Yeah. And now I'm just gonna hit these other Balverines so I can get to 21. I need to get nice, good stuff. And we'll go back to Nothole Glade. We were chatting beforehand, <laughs> and I just want to point out that uh, I, I went off and said, this is one of those games that is right up my alley in terms of video games, but I actually never played this, and I still to this day question why I haven't played it. It's yeah. A, it, is a, it is a good game, and as mentioned before, it is $9.99 on Steam right now, so you should pick it up. Uh, I'm going to pick up the uh, Arena Quest card, which is free. Speaking of picking things up, you also got to pick yep. up some upgrades. Yep. Working for months on that segue. <laughs> Excellent. This is a good segue. Thanks. Also available for weddings. Yeah, he's getting a bunch of upgrades here. He's also going to use the hotshot glitch, which we mentioned earlier, um, for specifically the spell in flame. Because um, right now we're at level three. No, that seems right. Yeah, no, you're good. Cool, so he's maxed out in flame with the hotshot glitch. Um, he's also going to try and do the same with multi strike. Uh, uh, try again. There we go. There yes. you go. Good stuff. Yeah. So uh, he bought in flame, and then he used the hot chocolate to buy another level of flame. So he has max in flame. Um, we've got the arena coming up next, which is the uh, the big lots of e bad enemies uh, quest. So there's going to be a lot of uh, like lower health enemies. So in flame is going to be very, very, very useful. Very useful indeed. Yep. 
uh, someone in chat has asked when I'm going to go to the Bordello, and I'm sorry, but we do not go to the Bordello in this run. We do, however, go to it in the 100% run and the unofficial pimp percent run. Um, yeah. Available in stores now. Get your copy. <laughs> 999. Uh, another spell Big Law has as well is Force Push, which is another multi utility spell. First of all, it's good for like, um, it's good for getting breathing room while moving so you can push enemies back so that they, you don't rush towards them. It also has an unintended side effect, which we will see in a little bit. Um, we're going to head up to the arena um, where we will have a one minute timer while our friend Chameleon, who is the bandit before us, dies in the arena, and then it's our turn. Uh, oh, spoilers. Sorry, Chameleon, major character, deep lore. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just pick up these potions and this uh, silver augmentation. I bought another one by accident. It's okay. Get all the augmentations. Yeah. Uh, did I put the Balverine or the... Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> you did put the Balverine. Um, I... Shush you. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to fill up those inventory slots with our uh, summon spell, and we'll tell you about that later. Uh, but now I'm going to take this guard, and I'm just going to yeet him down the stairs because we kind of need him over here. So I just keep eating him with hard force push. Everyone yeah, is kind of getting pushed around. It's a little bit silly. But now we have yeah. pushed the guard into the corner, and now his mouth will jibber jabber if he tries to move. Yeah. There we go. The guards move. Yeah, yeah they just like. They're just biting an invisible cookie anytime they move. So like, I'm, 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 I'm. I'm drinking water. You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Always hydrate. Always hydrate. It's true. Yeah, this is perfect hydration time. The reason he's doing this, by the way, is not just for fun. Um, the cutscene after a minute will have him placed around where that pillar is, just uh, to his right there. Um, so it just means we can talk with the guard straight away rather than having to run up the stairs. Um, I think that guard is chewing gum or something. That's my head cannon. Yep. Cool, so... The Wasp are dead. So this is what Force Push does. It damages enemies, pushes them back. It also doesn't check to see if the things you're pushing are alive or not. So we just can just Force Push dead bodies. Um, so you can see our combat multiplier going very much upwards. So we're at 20 now. We've just passed our best for combat multiplier. And it's go only going to go upwards, so uh, yeah, exciting stuff. Yeah, the combat multiplier is going up higher than GameStop was last week. <laughs> you have just dated this show <laughs> by the day, almost probably by the hour, depending on how much the combat multiplier is. My goodness. All right, our uh, will XP is going up higher than Dogecoin. There we go, that's my joke. Cool. So um, there's Hobbs here. You can see how quickly they all went down because they all have under 600 health. They all just all get one hit. Amazing. Yeah, your positioning is very important um, in the arena because we want to try and deal with like everything in as few like hits as possible. So. The uh, enemies will always spawn opposite of where you are, so they'll spawn over here. And I can anticipate where they're going to be, so I can accurately uh, inflame them. Yeah, you would think it's just pressing a button to do big AoE damage, but like there is a lot of depth and complexity to the arena. It's, yeah, who'd have thunk? Oh, Pushing on, down on the it? floor would, uh, would uh, be oh. so complex. Oh. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make it this round, unfortunately. But next round, Mission I'll be able to make it. We'll get him next time. Actually, no. I'm gonna surpass. I need to get to it. No, there's not enough bodies. That's all right. Hopefully, we don't pass 70 here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Nice. All right. Nice. So, Good job. Yeah, we made it to a very nice combat multiplier. And again, the inflame is just decimating. Oh, I didn't mean to roundhouse kick that boy. <laughs> just showing that one who's boss. Um, also, yeah. take note of how much uh, damage we were doing to the White Balvary earlier. We are doing about a thousand damage after a few seconds of pulling back the bow. Um, so that's three thousand damage. That's that one White Balvary done. Um, the reason we just did so much is because we put a Silver Augmentation on it, which does six times the damage. And then we put another, which now does thirty-six times the damage against White Balvary. So that's one down, that's two down. We are down to Clown. Yeah, we have a 
pretty well combo to play right now. Um, and know, just as a cherry on top. Ah, yes. Yeah. Um, so speaking to Whisper here, she's here, by the way, um, skips the announcer's dialogue because the announcer really loves the sound of his own voice. Um, so we can just make him shut up. Uh, I'll do it in the next wave, but um, uh, everyone get ready for a, uh, a bit of noise. So Yeah. Also, slight epilepsy warning. Um, so that's summon spamming. Big Law has summon on three different keys at once. Um, because summon has zero cooldown, it gives you 3 XP times your multiplier. So basically, every time he's using it right now, he's getting 300 XP. He's using it multiple times a second, and it makes this sound. That's the sound, all right. That is a sound. Out of all the sounds I've heard, that's one of them. I, I did not have yeah. um, my uh, physical shield up for that wave, so... I was just was about bit, to tell uh, you. A bit, bit spooky, but... All right. It's all right. It was a learning experience. Yeah, luckily summon spamming isn't as need isn't needed as much nowadays because we also like to call it the carpal tunnel uh, strat. We thought it was really good at the time, and then our fingers said no. Boy, be dead. Thank you. Uh, so again, the uh, fourth push also cancels animation, so I didn't have to wait for that one uh, Hollow Man to uh, fall over and die. Yep. Uh, this is probably one of the most dangerous ways, which is El Banditos. Because um, the bandits have the Albion firing squad and it's just terrible. Oh, you sound like you're typing an angry comment. <laughs> <laughs> Why no, is this guy glitching the game? That's unacceptable. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Oh, just one of the... <laughs> one of the... <laughs> it's just so well. I did see people in the chat talking about this being like one of the harder, if not the hardest trick in this, in this run. Uh, if someone were to pick this up, like how hard do you think learning all of this would take to learn? Oh, it's, it's really easy to like... Fable is a very beginner-friendly game. I, um, to toot my own horn a little bit, I've made a beginner's guide, which has like more beginner-friendly strats and like things that make the run a lot more accessible. Um, even stuff like the clip to get the Sword of Aeons is way, like, way easier than you think. Um, there's a lot of resources available for this game. It's a really fun game to learn and run and very satisfying. And highly recommend it. All right, so this is the uh, hardest wave of the arena, so I just need a little bit of focus. All right, so we're going to hit this rock troll. Oh. And then we're going to hit this rock troll. I mean, this is an earth troll, actually. But anyways, there Okay, go. that was good. That was, that was really hard. Yeah, well done. that was frame perfect. Good job, everyone. All right, that should be more than enough XP. Yeah. Now for the actual hardest round. Yeah, um, we were facing off the uh, rock trolls Stanith and Groin. That is their actual Jeez. names. So we're gonna, oh, we're gonna hit this rock troll in the uh, in the Stanith. Um, also, what um, Big Law was doing there was he was standing in the rotor blades because uh, the rotor blades hit you four times, so that does a whole lot of extra berserk damage. So, uh, dealt with those with ease. And now, moving on to the final wave of the arena. Nice. Three, two, All right. One. Final boss is a giant scorpion because Fable the Lost Chapters. Yep, so we're gonna hit Arachnox one time there, once more, and then a multi strike there, and then have. Arachnox insta-dive. Yeah, this, um, this Arachnox fight is very in-depth and it also has a lot of... Um, it's, it's basically completely reliant around health phases. Um, so there's a lot of things of... We need to make sure you're, we're standing in the right place, stand in, um, standing between two of his legs to manipulate his AI. Um, 
standing in the correct spot, making sure that um, his sword, oh, we're not in the way like that. We've lost our combat multiplier, but that's completely okay because we got a whole bunch of multiplier earlier. He is being yeah. a real Oh my person. lord. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had Arachnogs be like that rude. But, um, yeah, he is a very rude yeah. boy. I must eat a, I'm eat a red meat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and have a giggle. Yeah. Also, if you're not ready, you should, um... <laughs> Look, you learn these plugging skills. Cool. That's your Arachnox done, yeah. You can see he's really annoying sometimes. Um, very interesting fight. Cool. Um, so that wasn't actually the last boss. The final boss of uh, the arena is actually Ris Risper? Whisper. Sadly, we don't kill her. It's uh, slower to kill her, sadly. Although, in uh, marathon runs, it can be a donation incentive. Cool, that's Whisper down. And that is the arena done. Well done. That was pretty, pretty damn clean. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Minus the Arachnox, but like Arachnox will be Arachnox sometimes. Uh, now we'll be yep. going over to Barrel Fields and uh, to the Grey House, uh, mm -hmm. the slightly less uh, bright version of the White House, and <laughs> we will be uh, talking to Teresa there. How long were you working on that one, to be honest? Uh, about like three seconds. Good stuff. I'm proud of you. Good way to speedrun that joke. Eh? <laughs> eh? Eh? Hey. Eh. All right. So talk to Teresa, and we'll go back to the guild and get all the upgrades we're going to need for the rest of the run. Um, so as an update on the story, so our sister is alive, of course, we just spoke to her. Um, our mother is also alive and has been captured by the big bad boss of the game, Jack of Blades. Um, so we need to go into the prison through an ancient route through to Litchfield Graveyard, which we're going to find out through the archaeologist who we need to rescue because he's been captured by Jack's minions, the minions. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of overkilled the XP a bit, but it's fine. That's all right. Better to go over. The best kind of kill is overkill, like someone once said. Mm hmm. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> True. <laughs> we're also going to hotshot glitch uh, Berserk there. Sorry. Um, we're also going to hotshot glitch Berserk there. Even though we have the XP for it, we need to be like pretty damn evil to uh, max out Berserk. So um, we can just hotshot glitch around that. So that's uh, fun and exciting, which means we're going to do an insane amount of damage. Also, a fun thing to note about this game is that your age in the game is dictated by how much you've upgraded your skills. So when I go from like this like nice 30-year-old guy to um, a uh, freaking grandpa, oh my lord, my hair! Uh, <laughs> yeah, so aging is a thing in this game. It's like some sort of allegory for like not being able to be young and experienced because you're spending your experience and you're getting old. Um, Quest card available needs 10 years of experience. Yeah, uh, but you can uh, make yourself younger in the game by uh, doing some things like uh, donating to the Chapel of Ava or the Temple of Ava or sacrificing people to the Chapel of Scorm. But anyways, we're doing a bit more buy selling and we're going to get the Solus Greatsword, the most powerful melee weapon in the game. And it's just <laughs> available in Bowerstone North. Yeah, you can actually enter Bowerstone North early through a combination of several tricks or just like one trick called Etta Mode. I don't know what he's named after. Um, but yeah, you can get into Bowerstone North through several methods, which means you can get into all these maps and stuff uh, right from the start of the game after you finish the guild. Um, it's pretty nuts. We do that in 100% actually to get the Solus right at the start of the game. Um, so we have all these minions here. You can also see how far Assassin Rush is taking us. Um, and also we're going to try something here called Barrier Clip. No relation to Barrier Skip from Wind Waker. We were first. Um, so, hopefully, the stars align. Please. No. Ah, I'm not going to go for it. Yeah. Tragic. Yeah, it only saves like five seconds or something, and it's a little bit risky, so there's no pressure to do that. You can just go and kill the... Uh, the Dreadwing there. I've like messed that up like two times in my practice back, which is unfortunate. I've just given up on doing it, to be honest, mate. 
This is so sad. I like to play Oakville theme. <laughs> remix. Oakvale Trap Remix. Um, <laughs> that actually set mine off, anyways. by the way. Yeah. Sorry? That, that's, that set my uh, echo off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Google. Right. So here we're on the prison path, and uh, typically we have to clear this area out completely of the enemy. But instead, we can just kind of rush down to the... Uh, the bottom here, where the archaeologist yeah. is being trapped by these two uh, minions. Oh. Yeah, the criteria for this quest finishing is just uh, having no minions on the pier. So we're going to be quick enough that that doesn't happen. And oh, oh, oh I thought I didn't get it there for a second. It was no, a no, you're, you're good. <laughs> Sometimes it's like ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. So uh, here we're going to go to the, the Heroes Guild, and the reason for that is uh, when we teleport out of somewhere, we leave a recall to that area. And with that, we can just recall back to the prison path. And teleporting back is faster than running up the entire hill because this area only has one exit, and you're teleported to the nearest exit point of the map. I guess it's also worth pointing out here that normally we time the game with loadless, which is basically just game t uh, real time without the loads, because the loads can be really inconsistent um, from PC to PC, even like on the same piece, even like on the same like specs or OS and everything. Um, also, like, the upgrade menus are slightly faster on older systems, so, like, Windows 7 XP seem to handle the upgrade menus faster than Windows 10. Um, I mean, they would be faster on Windows 9, but, of, um, of course, Windows 7, 8, 9, so, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Bill Gates. Thanks. I can't believe Bill Gates killed Fable speedrunning. Bill Gate 9. All right. So, here we are on the oh, Litchfield uh, graveyard. Uh, and we have to find various pieces of Nostro's armor. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through here and uh, uh, do Adam's favorite thing in the game, fishing. Yep. Uh, so uh, this is basically RNG the quest. So we've got undead spawns, which are random, and they also oh. spawn in front of you. You also got that guy, the Gravekeeper. Shout outs to Budget. Um, we also have fishing, which is the demon's version of red light, green light. It's basically exactly how it sounds. So. The fish pulls, you can't click to reel it in. The fish stops pulling, you can reel it in. And it is very RNG laden, so we're gonna hope for hope for the best here. Pray. Pray for a good fish. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. As you can so see. It's 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 very, very not lenient. Um uh if you click three times while it is uh, trying to reel back, then it will snap the line, and that is very, very unfun. So I'm gonna go for a bit of a slower reeling this time. Woo! Close. All right. There we go. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Decent but second fish, but it's it's RNG. It's not fun. Yeah. Sometimes it can be way faster. Sometimes it. Um, sometimes oh, like that. I've. <laughs> Once in practice, I have failed it seven times in a row, and I'm not, like, bad at the game, I promise. <laughs> My arm. Sorry, he just complains about his arm there. Um... <laughs> I, uh, I did a bit of a joke for the stream, so I'm sure they'll, they'll laugh about that. But anyways, uh, this area is laden with zombies, well, hollow men, and we don't really like it. So I'm going to try and go for something called... I like to call swag clip. Uh, some of the boys call it rip clip, but I get swag oh, clip first, first try, try every time. Imagine just, just rolling up a mountain like that. Absolute Chad. Yeah. That is the most useless cutscene in the game, but it's also the most... It, okay, so that cutscene there is the only reason why we can't summon clip through the demon door immediately and skip all the fishing and digging and going through all of that malarkey. Um, yeah, so now in the circle of the dead, and we had to kill Hollow Men who entered the circle. Uh, that Hollow guy was just Hollow on the inside. But... Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, there's like a two hundred and fifty dollar plus bounty on uh, being able to successfully skip graveyard on a run. Wow, Unfortunately, it's not a... being claimed. That yeah, that was fantastic. insane. Yeah, there's a big bounty on skipping graveyard because of how RNG heavy it is. This is graveyard where all good runs go to die, of course. More on that yeah. later. All right, so now we're on a quest to save our mother, and we have mm -hmm. to go to prison. Yep. 
Alright, so here um, there's a Kraken. Hi Kraken. Hi Kraken. He's a little bit camera shy, but we'll see him later. Yeah, he missed his cue. But it's alright, he's doing a uh, he's doing a Kraken job. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> you really uh, wanna let that one hang. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, I'll take it as a compliment anyway. So yeah, traveling through these tunnels is uh, a little bit RNG because the uh, the Holloman will just spawn in wherever and uh, eat your uh, eat your assassin rush. So uh, and your lunch, terrible. And your lunch, yep. Eat my eat my ham sandwich. Very mm -hmm. tragic. Please go to eat my hamster. You like my god. My hamster. <laughs> uh, here's another uh, one of those nymphs. Uh, they are terrible, and I hate them. Look how fast he moves, that's crazy. All right, so we're gonna go back here, and we're gonna do some uh, in flames, and uh, thank, thank Avo, destroy that nymph, and uh, mm -hmm. be moving on through the prison. Yeah, these guards here, they're working for the big bad boss of the game, Jack of Plates. They're one of the few enemies where you don't get good nor evil for killing them, because it's like, I guess, morally ambiguous, because like, on one hand, they're doing their job, but on, all, on the other hand, they're working for the bad guy and they're trying to stop you, so, uh, yeah. Um, so here's Scarlet Robe. We're going to rescue her and we're going to leave prison and everything is going to be absolutely fine. We're going to walk yep. right out. It's like yep. it's like a, we get our one free phone call and we're just, like, leaving, like, leaving the... Uh, who, it's like, who are you going to call? Better call someone, of course. Either that or Ghostbusters, but I don't think they're around at this hour. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, oh no, it's a trap. We it have was been a trap set by Zach We have been sent been... to prison. It's very sad. Um, I'd like to point out, this guard is taking a, uh, a whiz, and he has his sword in his hand. I cannot recommend that to friends nor family. That is, that is not a good idea. Okay, Listen, he's good. he just likes to live on the edge. <laughs> That's one My way goodness, of it. let him do it. Yeah. <laughs> Except this edge is a very powerful sword. Anyway, I'd like to talk about Prison Skip, or more specifically, Prison Skip and why it will probably never happen. Um, we have tried so many things to skip prison, because you would think, oh, just like summon clip out the cell. Nope, you don't have magic. Um, just summon clip around the load trigger. Oh, nope, it's a different quest. So basically, prison is like five different quests, and they need to be completed perfectly in exact order in order for you to progress. Everything we have tried has ended in a dismal failure. You're showing the people what they want, Big Law. Yeah, um, yes. <laughs> show them the Union Jack boxes. That's what the people want. They paid good money for this. Um... But yeah, prison is like... Okay, here's what prison consists of. We're waiting for dialogue, then we do a prison race, then we do a stealth mini game, then we wait for more dialogue, we do another racing, another race, and then we do another stealth mini game, and then we escape back the way we came, and then we have a boss fight. It's, it's like 10 minutes. If we could skip this, this would like make the run sub one, it would be insane. There's like over two hundred and fifty dollars bounty on this is like three hundred or something. If you wanna like figure out a way to successfully skip prison in a run. Yep. Um Also as a side note, um you may see that in other speedruns we uh play the game in French and that's purely because uh French is the fastest language for the spoken dialogue here. So just speak faster in French here. English, funny enough, is the slowest. Um, and yeah, you've got languages in the middle like German, Russian, Spanish, Japanese. When we first uh, was looking at this, we theorized Japanese would be fastest, but it's like the second slowest or something like that. Yeah, French is the fastest. Shout outs to uh, Raheem. Yep. Raheem is our, our resident French lad and excellent, excellent person. Mm -hmm. He also holds a world record, which I guess is a plus. Yeah, he's, he's, he's okay at the game. Mm -hmm. it's weird he doesn't have to wait around and try and figure out what's being said on screen. He just knows. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, is it weird that those roles remind me so much of Oddworld? <laughs> I can't say I've played Oddworld, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> All right, I'd so also like to point the... out how everyone else gets pants and shoes and we don't. We got the... Uh, we just got the Union Jack box. I guess it must be like a... a uh, a, uh, a translation issue, so they all ask for pants and they're Americans, so they get the trousers, but 
in the UK, we ask for pants, we just get underwear, so... Uh, lost in yeah. translation, it happens. Classic translation, the American-British translation. Mm -hmm. Two completely different languages. Uh, but anyway, we're on the, uh, the Amazing Race Albion, and we're trying to make it to the Warden. And uh, <laughs> as a prize for making it to the Warden, we, uh, we get subjected to... Uh, Poetry. So poetry. We, uh, get to, we, we get to listen to some great poetry and uh, do a bit of speed tech here. Do a bit of a roll while the screen is the dark and faded. Of the jail and we're going to punch this bulletin board and bring us back to the front of the room. And we're going to look in a book to hopefully find a key. Luckily, this is not RNG. Jail. We're always going to fail on the first time. I am so glad this isn't RNG. Whoever, whichever dev made that not RNG needs a raise. I know this was released like 16 years ago, but well, seriously, give that well, guy a raise because... um. Because, yeah, you'll always fail it on the first try, and on the second try, you'll always get it. There is a way around that. If you fail the first prison race, um, and then succeed on the second prison race, you'll get the book first try. Um, this is only about 10 seconds slow, because this is usually known as, like, the pee break part of the run, because, like, you're just sitting around and waiting. You can go have a pee, have a drink, um, get a snack, get a cap. Uh, a very fun thing to note is, uh, watch the hair. The hair... The hair is very, um, it goes. Shout out to Physex. This is actually way before Physex is just. The hair just, it just goes, it goes so hard. Being a Physex, I'd like to dispel a rumor real quick here. This is completely off script. This is a completely proprietary engine, which was only ever used for this one game. This is not Unreal Engine, contrary to many rumors. This is a completely uh, um, in-house engine. It was only used for this one game, which is why this quest, like this game, is like not more broken because, yeah, there's like no documentation for it at all. I'm just doing a bit of emote spam there to, mm -hmm. I don't know, make the guy dance in the next cell over. But again, yeah. it is the Amazing Race Albion, and we're here again trying to roll through, and uh, spoiler alert, we will win because they have not uncovered the secret out of rolling. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just in, in, affixed with the, the hair now. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. there. Yeah, just I'm wait till you get like a ponytail or something. Yeah, I'm sorry that I've I've revealed this truth to you, but the hair just it's like string cheese. It just it just goes. The hair has highlights. Don't judge him. <laughs> so white. What's the highlight? Silver. <laughs> All right. I knew so you bought a silver for rotation the, uh, for something. Going for the Metal Gear Solid strat again. Imagine you're just reading poetry, you turn around, there's just a naked guy sneaking behind you in Union Jack boxes. Yeah. Alright, so now we have the key and we'll be on our way to freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we're really nice, we're gonna free these prisoners. I'm gonna get some revenge on the bastards. Fun fact, in the, uh, so we're playing obviously in English, so he says, you're a pal. In the American version, he says, you're an NTSC. What? <laughs> I hear you trying not to laugh, Big Lord. <laughs> I hear you holding in laughter. I don't think you can't not laugh at that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I love the sheer confusion, Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> That's a slow burner, let that one sink in. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> You're welcome, chat. It's a bit of a mixed response there, to yeah. be honest. Um, no, anyways, I'm taking all, uh, all the boos are positive. They're saying we boo are... <laughs> Sure, Jan. All right. So uh, we are <laughs> we are making our way downtown, um, walking fast, faces fast, and I'm uh, escaped from prison bound. Um, and fortunately, there's no nymph here or anything to deal with us. We're just uh, making our way out and trying to be fast. 
Hold on, I have a piano over here. I can play the rest of it. No, oh no, I can't. I'm sorry. No, DMCA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Get him! How'd you get down here? Again, back to the underground chamber where we'll face off against the one, the only, Hammer Shy Kraken. Right. So, this fight is not really difficult. We just have to turn these tentacles into calamari. Mm -hmm. And then the, the uh, Kraken will appear right here, blast him in the face with some arrows. Um, oh God! Uh, lads, Bimmy, lads, Jimmy, lads, David, lads! No! No! Oh, it's okay. A couple. Bimmy and Jimmy are alive. Okay. We're gonna keep these guys alive. Yeah, they're doing all right. All right. Awesome. They they made it out all right. They're good. Also, the like Kraken is really dramatic. He's like, oh, I'm dying. Oh. Yeah. Mr. Q and then over dramatic. He'll never make it in acting school. All right. Also, all the uh, the prisoner friends are gone. Rip the NTSCs. Yeah, they, they, they have they've completely disappeared. Like, I don't know where they went after we went through that door, but you know. Yeah. They're in a better place now. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now uh, we're going to Darkwood and ignoring that Balbrain because, again, Balbrains are danger puppies. Stay away. And the Earth and... Troll that we killed like an hour earlier. Oh, yeah, that guy. How's it going? Um, now we're going on to the Ancient Colus Gate. And, spoiler alert, this uh, this is a Colus Gate, and we need to Oi. activate it. Wait. And uh, like all great things, uh, things are powered by bones. So we have to we have to go over here and have these. Uh, hello, H hello. Where are they? Oh, here we go. They're they're a little bit late to the party. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we need to use and flame on all these skeletons. All these skeletons, please. They're running on Albion standard time. Understandable. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. So, so we're in no, Hook Coast. Hook Glade. Or Hook Coast, yeah. <laughs> not Hook Glade. Listen, they're next to each other on the map or on the, the region list. Don't don't at me. Um, <laughs> Hook Coast, nobody goes there. Nobody comes from there. Not even the people from there. Yeah, you can actually have people like in the in the town saying, Hook Coast, nobody goes there. Nobody comes from there. And they're in Hook Coast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so now we have to... Hurry back and talk to Maze, and um, there's some dialogue here. Please don't mess with the goods. No. 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 Uh, clearly, my mom just like stretching, you know, doing some yoga, uh, and she's been kidnapped, so that's pretty tragic. Yeah. We literally just saved her and she's gone and been kidnapped again. Oh. Like, like, we, she's Goodness been out of prison for like a minute. What's the deal, mom? <laughs> I'm going to go Sounds like you're going door. into a Seinfeld bit there. What's the deal with getting imprisoned? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. I, I, feel like, I feel like that's another joke do, that do, do. Chad's going to spend another 20 minutes trying to figure out how to explain to everyone. <laughs> Especially for the people we've never seen Seinfeld. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's the deal with traitors in Albion? All right. <laughs> so uh, now we're back in Hook Coast, not hot, not not whole Glade, and uh, there's these uh, these spooky screaming wraiths, and uh, we're just going to ignore them. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to fa face up against uh, someone who's definitely not a traitor. No guesses as to who. Um, yeah, uh, there's this energy fun... barrier here. It's a uh, we can interact with it. It makes sounds like a door. Also, fun fact: the guild masting's uh, chanting is different in every language. Like even though it's just gibberish, there's no like actual meaning behind it. 
Yep, so it's a maze. Big surprise there. Yep. I'm surprised I didn't get the uh, the second pace skip there. Wow. Yeah. Usually uh, we can uh, damage him enough to uh, get to the third phase immediately. Ooh, uh, he might be going up the lighthouse. I don't think so. Psych. It's prank. <laughs> Yeah, normally right. we try and set up for what's called lighthouse skip because like he teleports up the lighthouse and then he teleports down. So ideally you want to skip him doing that, but it's not too bad going up the lighthouse. It's a fun, exciting experience. We learn a lot. He, he just blasts himself. What a fool. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, I'll go for the, uh, the bow shot from up here since we have an extra multi shot. And yeah, we bam. need to waste one multi arrow. So uh, this is no harm, no foul. Ah, oh. if only it wasn't a traitor. Tragic. If only we, we uh, could have foreseen this sooner. Yep. Trying to drop some money on his corpse. Um, now we're going <laughs> back to the A penny for guild. your thoughts. And uh, we must talk to the guildmaster because we are needed there. Mm-hmm. We're back. All right. So now we must try and stop Jack of Blades. Jack also, Bri Rose stopped. is here. More on her later. She's now an important video game character. This is like the second to last quest of the original game, and then we'll go into the TLC portion of the game. Um, I guess to explain, like, Fable the Lost Chapters is like the extended director's cut version of the game, which was the version that was released on PC. Um, it's got extra stuff, more features, changes, bug fixes, all that jazz. Um, the original Xbox version of the game is slightly different, obviously ends much earlier. Yeah, one difference, though, is that in this version of the game, the Sword of Aeons is a lot weaker than it is in the original, uh, which is very sad. Yeah. Uh, in the original, it does 550, and here it does 230, so uh, rather rather different amounts. Um, yeah, it's just mostly just zipping through the maps, uh, going for the Albion, tour, or the Tour de Albion, as it's called. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, all the areas in the game are currently affected by uh, Jack of Blades, like, trying to take over the world, right? Yeah. You can actually summon clip out of some of the maps and then just, like, go into, like, Bowerstone or something and have all the minions just attacking villagers at will with, like, the Hell Sky and everything. Very Makes fun it easy and to pick very up all exciting. the houses in there. Yeah. Just get a house. True. Oh, yeah, there's an example of soft targeting, um, mm -hmm. not working in your favor, uh, but... You just wanted to check in on that guard, see how he's doing, making sure he's hydrated. Yeah, of course. Uh, stay hydrated, mm -hmm. folks. Uh, be sure to stretch a bit after this as well. Yeah. Don't get any blood clots in your legs. Stand up, stretch your legs. That's always important. Mm hmm I can recommend that to friends and family. Of course, this is the last, uh... Do some jumping jacks and stuff, yeah? <laughs> we won't talk about those. Um... <laughs> cool, right. so, uh... The guild is now on fire a little bit, but it'll be better soon. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit toasty, but... Mm -hmm. We'll uh, talk to the guild master here. He's, God, who uh, left he's, all those he, candles he's on? He's not doing too hot. Yeah. He gets better. He's just having a sit down. He needs to stand up and stretch his legs as well. There's no excuse. Yeah. Uh, now we're in the Chamber of Fate and uh, Jack of Blades is trying to get the sort of Aeons that we have on our back. Yeah, and all this thing one. was... Yeah, all this uh, like stuff Jack was doing was to try and get the sort of Aeons, but he just kind of didn't notice that we had it. Um... We also fight Jack with the sword of Aeons, so like... Like, insert Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man here. Uh, I tried to go for a uh, frame-perfect input there to start drawing the bow back um, whenever this cutscene starts. It's called a big shot because it's a very big shot and it just does one... It kills him in one shot, so... Yeah, no idea who found it. <clears throat> big law. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's also a bug that can sometimes happen where Jack will fall under the floor and, like, strange things will happen, which means, obviously, you can't hit him with the bow. But Jack's dead. We're also going to kill our sister for the sword we already have. This saves one second. We spent all that time trying to save it. It's like, ah, no, save a second. Yeah. 
Uh, very important here to not immediately travel away before the uh, auto save and cutscene plays, or else you will softlock the game, and that's bad. Mm -hmm. Not bueno. Um, this is the TLC portion of the game, and we start off with a match the squares puzzle. Um, and there, there's actually been several things which have made the match the squares puzzle quicker. So you can only walk in a grid of up, down, left, and right. But we found ways to make our movement faster and also, um, and also like do a diagonal movement on one step. It's like, it's like us cheating on chess. It's great. Um, so we're going to start off by blocking for a second. This reinitializes our movement and makes us move much faster. So we need to change yeah. them all to moon signs or all to sun signs. Um, there is also a glitch which lets you have free movement, but we can't right now use it in runs, which is a real shame. But if someone would like to figure out how to do that, that'd be bueno. Um, Biglow's also going to try and punch here on this next one, um, which means you can do a diagonal movement at like so, which like, yeah, it displaces your movement and means you can, yeah, solve this puzzle a little bit faster. Only we, only the Fable community could make a auto-scrolling walk puzzle faster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so these prophets all have their own personalities, and they're all very cool. Except yeah, the for prophets the last are like... One. The prophets are like some of my favorite dialogue in the game. They're even great in French, where there's like, Soleil! Soleil! Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this last guy is um, not a spell fella. Yeah, he's he's a rude dude. We don't like him. Me. He set himself up for failure here. Yeah. I do enjoy the voice acting in this game, though. It yeah, is very what good. I've heard so far. Like this is this is an excellent game. This game but... oozes charm and soul. That is what I can say. It's a very charming, soulful game. Uh, we're also going to equip the sword, Solus Great Sword, jumping back to Earth, and we're going to teleport to not not Whole Glade. Shut up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen, I, I you set yourself up for that second. one. <laughs> okay. So we have to go climb the uh, lighthouse again and uh, activate the lighthouse because you know the lighthouse needs to be lighthouse. On. Yeah. Yeah. We have the uh, the fire heart, and uh, it's like a looks like a giant tootsie pop. But um, <laughs> we uh, need to slide it into the uh, the lighthouse up here to summon the, the lighthouse ship machine. Ground. Also, rolling up those stairs is way harder than you think. Have you ever tried to roll upstairs? I cannot recommend it. Oh well, he has ignored me. This is so sad. All right. There's a surprising amount of RNG with these summoners. He's on a very strict cycle right now. Oh, that was good movement. Um, he's hoping to get an instant kill. So there's like an animation cancel where we can do because normally the, like, the summoners take a really long time to die, but they can just sort of like disappear. Uh, we'll hope Doesn't we really can do it on this on last one. one. But this last one is very, uh, very nice to get. Mm -hmm. Hoping for the best. There uh, we go. Oh, not quite. Almost. Thought, thought I had him, but unfortunately. <coughs> Pulled a sneaky one on, yeah. Gosh bless. Thank you. Um, so now we're at the Northern Wastes, um, and we're going to face up against the Ice Row, who is my arch nemesis. Um, this is like health phase, the boss, so you have to hit him a bunch, and then he jams his fists into the ground 13 times before you can kill him. Um, he is also the run killer of no hit runs, so I've tried to do no hit runs, and this guy has killed so many runs, it's insane. He is a. Uh, Big meanie. Yeah, so I get him down to this point in his health, and then he'll start doing the slams. Um, if I don't, then he'll do another attack, and that wastes a bit of time. Yeah. Which is, you know, not fast. We can also see if we get an animation skip here. Oh, we did. Nice. So he, like, disappeared straight away, which is excellent. Um, so we're going to head mm -hmm. to the northern foothills. Um, we're going to go through these minions. So I don't believe Big Law's going to do it, but if you want, I can try and explain a teleport strat we do. Um, sure. <laughs> okay, so we go to this point, we teleport to Lost Bay, we then roll back into the Colors Gate and teleport back, okay? You still with me? That puts us at the end of the map uh, towards where Archon Shrine is, um, and then we roll into it. Our recall point is set to Northern Foothills. We walk a little bit into Archon Shrine, we then teleport back to Northern Foothills and then teleport back. That puts us at the entrance to Snowspire. 
and then the cutscene starts, and then we're at Northern Foothills, right where we need to be for the next quest, which is Necropolis. Um, and yeah, that will come from teleporting back. This saves five seconds of game time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, that's... Just imagine, like, the bulletin board from that episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia with Pepe Sylvia. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're not doing that. So we're going to the Archon Shrine, and we're going to go to the Necropolis, which is RNG. Yep, so, so this is the and, second graveyard where all good runs go to die. Yeah, so I'm not lying here when I say when going to the Necropolis means that we are going to go pilfer the, vill the graves of the villager people, or the village people, and uh, learn how to do the YMCA. This is not a joke, this is genuinely what you do. You get the Yurok, Miron, Avista, and Kalaran stones, which spell out YMCA, and you get them as expressions as well. You get to do the dance as well. You, you can do the I dance. Mean, we, if we have time, I, we can I, do I, the dance. Yeah. Um, we will, so yeah, we're, we're, looking for th we're looking for we'll three specific graves here. I love it, which is right here. T Fung and uh, George W. Um, these are all the graves you need to dig, so this is why Big Law is checking the graves instead of digging them. Um, green, dot denote, green dots denote where they could be, but um, there's no guarantee, so yeah, this is RNG, the quest, part two. Hopefully this one. Ooh. That's a shame. Yeah. Necropolis can be really brutal at the end of a run. Luckily, the RNG is fixed on anniversary in that there is no RNG, which is very nice, but, um... Right, cool, so, so it's the last two. Over here. That's, yeah, uh, this... that's pretty bad luck, but... Oh, well. That's basically the worst luck you can get, I think, which is a, a real shame, but we're doing pretty good for time, so this is all good. Not even going to check this grid because it should be it. Yeah, this is also known as the unreadable grave because, like, the targeting thing for it is really, really, really precise, so it's really hard to check it. So sometimes you just have to give up and and just dig it, and sometimes you have to, like... Yeah. Go hope for an animation skip here. No, ah, no, no animation skip. That's all right. So now I'm going to go back to Snowspire Village and talk to Scythe. And, uh, uh, I could do the YMCA, like, up there, but we'll be prompted to do, like, we'll learn about, like, lore and stuff, which is not fast. I mean, doing the YMCA yeah. isn't fast anyways, but, uh, the yeah, best no, time you can just here. You have uncovered. We have uncovered. We have uncovered. Yeah, we've got time for the YMCA. You can replace some seven slots and do that. Alright. Uh, you can't play the music that's copyrighted. Obviously. Unless yes. you can play it on the piano. Uh, I still think that may be, you know, <laughs> Just play it out of tune, it'll be fine, no one will notice. There you go. Alright. Y you know. M C and A. Alright. So Hey. hey, there we go. We did it. <laughs> and all the other letters, like M, C, and Y. <laughs> all right, uh, our contract. <laughs> yeah. So cool. now so we, this... have to talk, we have to talk to Briar Rose and learn about the hero souls that we need to open up the bronze gate. Yeah, so the, the first souls one we need are... Is the, uh, oh, sorry. The first one we need is the, uh, the arena soul. So we could either go to the arena and go through some waves and it takes a while, or we can just go kill Thunder, which is obviously the superior choice. All right. Get ready for this. Quest start. Quest done. That was a hard one. Yeah. That was, yeah. Cool. And then the next one, we can either take our mother soul from Oakvale or we can just kill Briar Rose where she stands, which is, uh... I just realized DMCA and YMCA are only one letter off each other. Yeah, so uh, the start of this fight is pretty quick, so we're just going to blast her with a force push and then knock her into the wall. 
And we're just gonna yeah. stand in the middle here and wait for her to uh, teleport in. Yeah, her gimmick is that she spawns clones of herself, which we have to like kill one by one, but with force push we can just kill them all at once. Berserk's gonna wear off right now. We're very oh. cross about these clones. Oh, we launch her? Ah, oh, not quite. That's a shame. <laughs> Sometimes she can land up on the ledge and we can just kind of yeet her out of existence, which is kind of mm -hmm. funny. Uh, yeah. Now we're gonna go to Litchfield Graveyard. And uh, the last soul is the oldest soul, so we can either get the Guildmaster's soul or go for the Nostra's soul. So what we're doing here is we're going to go to the graveyard and just go like halfway uh, because we need to start a certain part of the quest in order to actually be able to get Nostra's soul. Yep. Um, yeah, before we had to fight the Guildmaster back in like for about 2013 to 2016 or something until I found it was faster. And that was terrible because you have to like damage boost from Berserk from about eight hits. And you don't actually fight the Guildmaster, you fight a bunch of guards, so you had to like kill 15 guards and hope for headshots and there was some RNG related to a voice line which maybe saved 10 seconds. It was terrible. But now we kill Nostra and it's much faster and much easier. Yeah. Also, the run is almost over. Like, it's gonna be over in like two minutes, so... Yeah. The Nostro's gimmick is that he goes like invincible until you kill some undead. So we go once, twice, and yes. he's dead. Like a sack of potatoes. Very good one cycle there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we're moving on to the final quest of the game. Dragon Jack. Defeating Dragon Jack. Yeah, also Jack of Blades is alive again. Spoilers. Um, yeah. Yeah, this fight is either really easy or really hard, depending on how quick you are. Um, but yeah. Big Lore is ideally going to be going as quickly as possible on this. Um, I guess at this point we can, yeah, thank, uh, thank you Big Lore for, for doing this amazing run. You've been, uh, you've done a very, very good job and you could have asked much more. Um, shout out to the Fable community as a whole. We're a fantastic community, almost 500 strong in our Discord. Lots of people ready and willing to help. We've got a great community. I'd highly recommend picking up this as a speed game for less than for less than ten dollars, might I add, bargain bin, shout outs. Um, just as Big Law does the final hit on Dragon Jack here. Alright, and, and get ready on time. Up. I'll call it. And time. Good stuff. Excellent. That was that's a good time. Pretty good. Yeah. Considering we stopped to do the YMCA. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you guys so much for that uh, YMCA. Thank you so much for the run in general. Um, if if people that. wanted to see either of you uh, on Twitch, where could they go? Uh, well, I'll, I'll shout out Adam first. You can go to twitch.tv slash etum. Uh, you can find him there. Mm -hmm. Whether or not he'll be streaming remains to be seen. But... Don't bully me. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, and I am uh, twitch.tv slash biglaw uh, I try and stream every now and then and yeah you can do a kickflip yeah, sorry? you can do a kickflip as well I, I can do a kickflip I do speedrun Tony Hawk may have seen me on other GDQs you know actually doing Tony Hawk but maybe we'll see this game on GDQ never know uh, yeah. but yeah uh, to show my own channel a little bit I, I yeah I, I play Fable, I've been doing no hit runs, it's been it's been good fun. But yeah, twitch.tv slash item, twitch.tv slash big law. Okay, and if anyone is interested and in, like maybe they watch here and they're like, man, this seems like a really fun run. I'm really invested. I wanna learn about the speedrun. I wanna learn the speedrun. Where would they go? Where would be the best place? Speedrun.com slash fable TLC and you've got the Discord there. We're always in there, we're always happy to help. And there's also a whole bunch of guides. There's beginner-friendly guides, there's text guides, video guides, um, all kinds of guides. And if you're ever not sure about anything, just feel free to ask questions. Asking questions, we love answering questions. It's great. Um, yeah, everyone is welcome here. You'll be surprised at how how uh, how easy this game is to pick up. I highly recommend it. Like some of the stuff you saw here may be crazy, 
but you'll either be able to do it yourself or there's beginner friendly alternatives that like a 10 seconds slower so yeah very very uh great speed run overall in speed game okay any other thing any other shout outs any other things you'd like to say at the last second um thanks for having us on it's very uh, very kind of you to have our first showing of fable on the gdq channel very kind of you indeed yeah here's to many and, more uh, i hope yeah. yeah, and uh, shout out, shout out to Adam for uh, being a great lad and doing commentary for me. It is very late for him, so he should probably get some sleep real soon. Thank you again, Adam. You're you're a pal. I it's alright. It, <laughs> it could be worse. You once asked me to commentate at seven in the morning, so we'll call it. <laughs> we, we don't talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Just a quick a couple quick announcements before we move on to our next run. Uh, these hotfix shows are brought to you by viewers like you. If you would like to have ad-free viewing, please consider using your Prime gaming account to support the weekly GDQ hotfix content. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, consider subscribing to the channel or even sharing our shows throughout all of social media. Also, don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube in the future and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice for free, every month for free. Please consider using your Prime game account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. Once again, we're going to take a small little break here uh, to play some ads. This is a great time for you guys to get up, hydrate, stretch, walk around, do some jumping jacks, even though we discussed earlier that may not be the best idea. Uh <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> Uh, no, stretching is always good, you know, to get all that type of stuff. But we're going to be back here in a little bit with Supersonic running Captain Skyhawk. So stay tuned. Thank you, everyone. Take care. See you around. Have a good night. Bye-bye. All righty. Welcome back to The Bargain Bin here on The Hot Fix, showcasing various games all under $20. Just one quick announcement real fast. If you are watching this on YouTube and would love to support our content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. And now we have a very fun Captain Skyhawk run with our good buddy supersonic how are you doing on this wednesday i'm doing fantastic how are you doing i'm doing well i'm excited <laughs> <laughs> all right good to hear um so anyways uh this is captain skyhawk uh this game was released in 1989 for the nes and this was pretty much made by rare and milton bradley Although it's kind of funny that Milton Bradley is on there because it's mostly known for like board games and other various toys like back in the late 80s and early 90s. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm just going to do one more reset. And then right when we get to the title screen, I'll do a countdown. All right, here we go in three, two, one, go. All right, so one thing to note, there is no music uh, throughout the main levels of this game. The only times you will hear music is like during the title screen and any of like the score countdowns as well as like the boss fights. So uh, we're pretty much taking a trip back to memory lane. Uh, I'm sure this has been a very obscure title for a lot of people. Um, this is like one of the first shmups that I played back in the day, um, along with like Gradius and some other like um, rail shooters but I remember this one very vividly like because my cousin had this game when he was a kid and then whenever I came over and we would play this game together uh, he would show me how to play this and I would pretty much game over at the very like first couple levels of the, of the game but we're gonna try not to game over too much um, since there are limited continues in this game um, however we are gonna try to 1cc this uh, so we'll do our best with the five lives that we have currently also, another thing to note, um, whenever you see like groups of five of these enemies, uh, you could earn credits. And credits are basically your currency of the game. Anyways, we're back to our first boss fight here. Almost got shot. Also, if we get hit once, uh, we're practically dead. <laughs> so, just 
gotta stay alive here. Just like that, we finished our first enemy base. So as you can see, uh, there are four, um, I would call them like bases, and they're generating power to the main mothership. And after each main mission, we will go to this mini mission. So this is kind of like your Top Gun style mission. And each plane that we shoot down will give us a credit. And it's actually best to uh, defeat these planes as soon as possible, like right as you see them on screen. Because if you let them linger on the screen for too long, it does take a little bit of time. So we just want to try to shoot them down, and especially when you're playing on an NES controller. It's kind of hard to let control. <laughs> but um, we want to have 30 credits before we get to our first docking station. And when we go to our docking station, uh, we will be upgrading our cannon, which is our main weapon. And as you can see right now, like it is shooting very slowly. However, since we have the crosshairs, like we're able to shoot down the enemies a little quicker. So we're gonna try to do a neat trick in this uh, docking station here. Ah, did that a little too early. It is actually possible to get in the docking station before it completely spawns. But it is a very tight window, so we'll try to... We have a few more opportunities to do that. And thankfully, we did get an extra life after the first mission, so... Not too much is lost there. So this mission here, uh, this is our cargo mission. And we have to drop two crates of cargo. If we end up missing a cargo drop, uh, this level will continue to loop until we manage to get the correct, you know, like, landing for the cargo. So this first one's coming up right about here. It's gonna line up... And we're just going to drop our cargo. We got it. So now we need one more. So yeah, like, <laughs> we're pretty much just shooting a bunch of things. And I don't even know what those enemies are. They're, they just look very random. A lot of them do look like planes. Or they have like, you know, these army tanks here. And we got like a random sphinx. Because we're out in the desert, supposedly. Even though it's like in an isometric form. And there we go. We got our second cargo drop. And now we're heading into yet another Top Gun style stage. And this time the planes will start shooting missiles. So now currently we are at level four for our cannon. We uh, The maximum level is five. So this next upgrade will be our final upgrade and we don't need to buy anything else throughout the remainder of the game. Uh, you could choose to buy missiles if you want, but I don't really use missiles since the cannon is practically overpowered once you level it up to five. So I'm just gonna watch out for those missiles that they're shooting at us. So if they're like uh, flying towards us, uh, it it doesn't cost too much time if they fly off. But if they're flying behind us, then yeah, we want to shoot them down as quick as possible. All right, so now we're heading into our next stocking station. Let's see if we can. Nah, I didn't line up correctly. There we go. So the visual cue for the quick entry is pretty much in the center of the screen for the docking station. And now we have our first high speed mission and we have a red plane that is after us as well. Um, if we end up dying in this stage, it'll pretty much put us back to normal speed. However, um, only in the fast stages we can actually either speed up or slow down. So ultimately we do want to keep this sped up so we can get through it a lot quicker. However, there is these sharp turns where very tight. Oh, we got shot down. So now I got to hold select and then push up to go back to full speed. Dude, that guy got me twice. Okay, we're going to try to be careful not to die anymore here. Should be getting close to the boss fight. Should be right about here. Just watch out for these shots. There we go. Boss fight time. There we go. It is actually possible to die like right after um, we beat the enemy base because the shot is still like on screen. And I have died like that before. It's pretty funny. All right, now another Top Gun style mission. So the maximum credits you can have is 99. Um, however, we don't really need any more credits. We just need to shoot these planes down. Yeah, and also with these plane patterns, they are actually fixed. Uh, there is no RNG in this game. 
So whether you leave it on the title screen as long as you want, or you just do it from a quick reset, um, these patterns will remain the same. So it does take a lot of memorization since there are like seven of these missions with the Top Gun style. So like trying to memorize like all the planes that fly by does take a bit to learn, but not too bad. All right, next docking station. Ah, almost had it. You'll get it. <laughs> yeah, that quick entry is really difficult. Uh, it's, I think it's like a two or three frame window, like right as you line it up. And now we have our, this is the, like the sea, like the ocean style, like mission where you have like a bunch of like ships. Um, on the, there's like, um, there's like another set of these four missions that we're currently doing. So it does seem like it repeats a little bit, but, uh, these enemy shots are a little faster. And also like, uh, when we get to the next, uh, ocean level, there will be these, um, these mines that if we try to fly over them or shoot them down, like the exploding radius can kill us. So in that mission, we will not be shooting as much. This one, we can actually cheese these first two turrets here. We just kind of be above them and just shoot them down. Oh gosh, I didn't do a good job on that one. Okay, so it looks like we're not going to get a one credit clear here, unfortunately, since we are already at our last life. But no big deal. So now we end up saving a scientist. Uh, this scientist will be creating a missile weapon. So you will see it on the main screen right now. There's like half of it completed. So we need to save another one later on. All right, back to the Top Gun stages. If I don't end up getting an extra life shortly, I will take an intentional death on the next mission. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep shooting these guys down. Just gotta watch out for the missiles. Very shortly when we go to our next uh, Top Gun style stage, uh, the missiles will be uh, being shot from like from the planes that are moving forward here. Almost got hit by that missile. Also, if you end up ga getting a game over, like in the middle of a stage, it will start you back at the beginning of the mission. So thankfully, like it doesn't like completely start over. So it'll just start over from the mission that you left off from. I'm not gonna risk going for the quick entry there. Oh, it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> oh, there, now we got it. Of course, I had the game over in order to get it. That's what the game wanted me to do. Say, hey, we'll let you get in, you know, once you game over. So there we go. <laughs> All right, so now we're on mission five. This is technically like your repeat of mission one, except they have like a different color palette. So these different color palettes, now we're gonna see like different enemies. And we're going to get these just slightly quicker shots as well. Also, imagine if you're like a pilot and you're just flying left and right, con like constantly, like imagine how you would feel like while you're inside a plane. <laughs> and if you had a passenger with you, like they would probably get like air sickness or something. Aren't you so you're pretty much like flying like a maniac. Planet, so to say. Yeah. <laughs> So, like the atmosphere may be different you know the plane may not be able to fly in some areas yeah <laughs> all right so unfortunately we cannot um speed up in these missions like this is pretty much our max speed that we can go it's only on those um those faster speed missions that we're able to like either speed up or slow down right, we should be approaching the boss here And we got an extra life for our troubles. All right. And of course, yet again, more Top Gun style stages. <laughs> now, since there isn't really any music in this game, like just besides from like the, the boss fights and then the score countdowns and such, I usually think of the Top Gun soundtrack from the movie. 
Like, I always imagine that in my head while I'm playing this game. <laughs> I was going to say, because they had, like, right at this time, they could have, you know, gotten a rendition, not a actual rendition, like a parody of Angel Zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, we did get shot by a missile. Um, you do actually stay up on screen for a bit, but then after a couple seconds, like you just end up just going, like flying downward, like out of your control and just kind of crash into the ground. All right, I'm not gonna do any more of those quick entries since we're very limited on lives. And I wasn't lined up correctly, so that's just great. There we go, now we're in there. Okay, next mission is another cargo drop mission. So in a sense, like, when I was uh, starting to learn this game, I was trying to understand, like, what could the lore be for this game? Like, what is exactly going on here? And then as I looked more into it, it's like, okay, we're pretty much fighting, like, an, you know, an alien invasion. Even though, like, a lot of these planes and vehicles look very, like, normal. Like, well, I guess to define normal, it's like, well, we see like army tanks. Like, we don't see any like extraterrestrial style like vehicles yet. Although it kind of looks funny that they have like those ships like on this desert ground. And since it is an isometric style view, like we kind of imagine like, okay, we're in a desert and there's like these pyramids and whatnot. We see trees, like, that looks normal. Should be another Sphinx coming up very shortly, so we'll be able to do our second cargo drop. All right, let's go ahead and line up and get the drop. There we go. That looks like that's pretty difficult to do on a casual playthrough. Yeah, when I played this casually, it was very difficult to line up correctly um, because the drop of the cargo, it starts off really slow at first, and then it just kind of speeds up afterwards. So it's like trying to understand the timing. So then I looked for a visual cue when I was doing the speed run. And I was like, okay, I see these arrows on the ground. And I, I think there's like four arrows on screen. I didn't quite pay attention to it, but I usually drop it when I see the third arrow like going down. So that's when I drop it. Oh, dang. I guess I got missile there, or I ran into a plane or something when I was trying to shoot him. We also had someone in chat say to uh, sing a parody version that's, you know, DMCA friendly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to get the full effect. To get the full effect. That's exactly what it is. Okay, let's line this up here. I'm very low on life, so I'm going to try to keep these as best as I can, especially with the high-speed mission coming up right now so we got our our old friend the red plane back and trying to appear behind us and then just try to go up front okay, we're back at one life left so and this is a very difficult game too like especially like when you start playing it casually like it is like one of the hardest NES speedruns out like not just speedruns but like NES games out there I've noticed that with a lot of, like, the, the Milton Bradley games. They're very, very, like, low radar, but they're really difficult. Yeah, you know, I wasn't too familiar with a lot of Milton Bradley, Milton Bradley games. This is, like, the only one that I know of. Um, but, like, I don't remember exactly. Like, you know, it's been a long time since I've played anything from Mil Milton Bradley. One that comes to my head always is a game called uh, Time Lord. It's super difficult. Oh, I think I may have heard of that one. Yeah, I'm like dying way too much on this stage, and I flew into that one. Okay, I'm just going to keep it at normal for the remainder. So this is how it would look like when it's on regular speed. Okay, should be approaching the boss. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that one almost that got me close. there. <laughs> I like how the plane, even during the boss, just never gives up. 
Yeah. <laughs> they're they're going to try to get you from the grave, practically. <laughs> Alright, we're getting close to the final boss. We do have one more uh, mission, as we mentioned. We do have to save another scientist to construct the second half of the missile. So that will be upcoming after this. I already did use up two continues, so we're very limited on lives here. Just let that guy fly by. The one thing I did like about these uh, Top Gun missions is like the various colors of the scenery. And then kinda... there's like some colors where it reminds me of like various sodas or something or some sort of like juice drinks <laughs> as a kid. Yeah, the game in general has a very nice palette to it, which I really enjoy. Okay, I'm gonna line it up and go in. Okay, let's just go to the last mission here. And then after this mission, there will be one more um, Top Gun style mission. Oh my gosh. No, I'm just not going to shoot anything. I'm just going to hug these mountain areas here. Just not shoot anything. We're just going to try to be careful. We're on our last life. I'm not sure if I have another continue after this. So. Yeah, well, let's hope play it best. safe. <laughs> All right, so while we're doing this, um, I haven't actually did a speedrun of this in like three years. Um, my PB is a 1952 of this game. Uh, world record is 1801 by Jacobo the Chocobo. Um, he was the one that actually found the quicker strat to the dock entries. And I was kind of messing around with it when I was uh, de-rusting this game. And it could save like a, I think it's about a couple seconds. Uh, and since there was like roughly seven of those, it does add up to like maybe like 14, 15 seconds, somewhere around that line. And then uh, pretty much my inspiration for running this game was uh, Toad 22484. Uh, he's like a, a well-known NES speedrunner. He's done like various games, also like uh, played in GDQs. Uh, so he was like one of my biggest inspirations and we just died. <laughs> So yeah, that was what I was mentioning before about those uh, mines in the water. Uh, their exploding radius is ridiculous, and just those tiny bits actually got me. But yeah, like as I was saying, um, Toad was like one of the biggest inspirations of running this game, and um, yeah, and just learning this game in general. Like even though it's pretty much like an auto scroller per se, like you kind of wonder, like how do you even speed run auto scrollers? So then when I looked into it and I saw like how quickly you can beat the boss fights, uh, like how fast you can get those uh, planes in the Top Gun sections, like trying to get them as soon as you see them spawn. And then of course, like dealing with what I like to call the mother brain at the very end, like not to rip off Metroid, um, like that final boss. It, it is actually a pretty ridiculous final boss um, as we will see very shortly, hopefully. I'm gonna try my best to keep the last remaining five lives that I have. Yeah, this this stage is fairly long. It like the game is pretty much trying to get you all ready for the final showdown with the alien invasion, like the the mother lord of the the aliens. Ah, <laughs> that was a little too low for that one. And also kind of interesting to note. Okay, you know what? Let's go to the right because that side is not being friendly. There is a fuel gauge on the right side, and there is no way to get fuel in this game. <laughs> that seems... So it does run low, but yeah, there's no way to like get, get fuel, even when we're in danger. Okay, finally the boss fight. Okay, yeah, kind of shot... See like how I shot those two front turrets? Did a little bit of a zigzag there just to be safe. All right, so we got three lives remaining. We're pretty much on our final continue right now. So this is our only shot. And of 
course, we got one more Top Gun section to go through. I th I, you got this, man. <laughs> I'm gonna try to focus a little bit here. Although this, I think this pallet kind of reminds me of the very first stage, except like the planes start shooting missiles. It's like a lot of memorization involved, like also kind of like guessing to see like where these planes actually spawn. No, the missile coming. Okay, down to two lives. And yeah, like zero does count as pretty much like your last life. So. Alright, here we go. We got the mothership coming up. And this boss. Our gravity is very strange, so like you're gonna see me just kind of fly like all over the place. So we just gotta make sure not to get shot down, which is really close. And time is gonna be like when the congratulations screen appears. Got it. That is totally and a Nintendo boss. time. <laughs> all right, that's that's all right. And what do we get for beating the game? Mission complete. Alien invasion fleet destroyed, and we get the greatest screen of all. Game over. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> it is such an anticlimactic ending, but <laughs> hey, you got third place. <laughs> yeah, we got through it. Um, so I'll just put my name on there. But we didn't quite catch up to Brendan. But that is Captain Skyhawk, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hope you all enjoyed the run. It, as you saw, it is quite a struggle. <laughs> but we did get through it. We are under estimate, so I'm pretty happy about that. And also, uh, Midnight Vesper, I thank you so much for the opportunity for allowing me to showcase this game. Um, this is a very obscure NES game as well as a speedrun. So, uh, yeah, again, thanks for having me. Of course. And if anyone that was here wants to know maybe where to follow you for some of the other games you run or to see more as Captain Skyhawk, where could they do so? Uh, so I stream on Twitch. So my Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash supersonic underscore. I used to have the 71087 at the end of my name, but that got changed recently. And unfortunately, I had to get the underscore in my name since there is another supersonic out there. But um, yeah, you can find me on there. And then I do have a YouTube. You can find me at Supersonic71087. So I do have the numbers in that one. As well as Twitter. You can follow me at Supersonic71087. Um, I do have a Discord. Um, you can find it in my uh, Twitch page. And there is no Discord for this game because it's still very small. Um, there's only like six runners for this game. But um, other than that, you will find me running mostly Mario and Sonic games, uh, as well as Animaniacs on the Sega Genesis. Um, I do also speedrun various other like retro games like Chippendale on the NES and um, just learning various speed games like along the way. So yeah, that's pretty much where you can find me. So definitely drop a follow if you enjoy retro speedruns. Yeah. Uh, and I said, you, I know you said there wasn't a Discord for this game, uh, but if someone was interested after watching us, like, man, this could be a really fun thing to pick up or they pick it up and get it immediately and maybe they want another challenge, where, where could they go? to see uh, more information about the speedrun? Um, you could go to speedrun.com and then you can search for Captain Skyhawk. Um, there aren't any like guides for this game just yet, but there are like, there is actually a video of uh, Jacobo the Chocobo performing the quick entry for the docking stations. Um, I also watched like various other runs to learn the game. So like you can watch uh, his like his run. You can also watch Toad's run because he was a former world record holder. And you can kind of see like how he deals with the patterns for the Top Gun style stages. Um, other than that, yeah, there isn't really much more information about this game uh, since it isn't really like actively run right now. But I don't know. Maybe I may continue to play this and see if I can bring it down to an 18 minute time. So. Hey, that'd be fun. Yeah. All right, any, any other shout-outs, anything else you want to say at the last second here? Uh, yeah, so huge shout-outs to uh, Jacobo the Chocobo, uh, Toad, and also Sinstream, another person who I respect, and he also actually played this game because of me, <laughs> as well as like some other games. So uh, huge shout-outs to them. Uh, also huge shout-outs to the retro community, um, just for you know being like such amazing people and pretty much welcoming, welcoming me into open arms when I started speedrunning like four years ago. 
So, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone watching as well. Uh, you guys are awesome. Hope you all enjoy the game, and that'll do it for me. All righty. Thank you so much for that, Supersonic. Just a couple of quick announcements real fast. Don't forget that these hot fake shows are brought to you by viewers like you. If you would like to have ad-free viewing, consider using your Prime gaming account to support the weekly GDQ hotfix content. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, please consider subscribing to the channel or even sharing all of these shows on your social medias. And of course, if you're in the future watching us on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider your using your Prime gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. We're going to take a small break for our last game here on the Bargain Bin. Don't forget that speedruns from the Crypt will follow the Bargain Bin, so there's still a plethora of games for tonight. But, you know, we're going to take this time to play some ads, hydrate, stretch, walk around, do everything that we feel and... Maybe you guys want to do the same as well. Um, guys, gals, and, ever, and all around pals. And of course, coming up here in just a little bit after our small little break is going to be Ori in the Blind Force Definitive Edition for, with Smashy. So stay tuned. That run is going to be super fun. We'll be right back. All righty. Welcome back, everyone, to the Bargain Bin showcasing video games and speedruns under $20. I'm your host, Midnight Vesper, and just a couple quick things before we go ahead and get into Ori and the Blind Forest. Keep in mind, if you're watching this in the future on YouTube and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash GDQ. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free. Please consider using your Prime Gaming account to subscribe to the GDQ Twitch channel. And now for Ori and the Blind Forest. I had a transitional thing there, and I just it blanked in my head. I am so sorry to everyone. <laughs> um, we have a wonderful runner, Smashy, here to welcome us into Ori and the Blind Forest. And I want to make sure I pronounce this correct. Signless, Bashless, and Stompless. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to see this run. Yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty fun to watch. Um, so I guess I'll just introduce myself. I'm Smashy, um, Smashy SR on Twitch, and commentating for me will be Roos. Roos Hi. Also. <laughs> so he'll be kind of off camera for now. So, um, But uh, we'll, we'll kind of uh, explain things as we go. So we, we can we can kick it off at any point now. So. Smashy, you want to do the countdown? Uh, yeah, sure. Awesome. All right. All right. Starting in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, as she said, this is signless, bashless, stompless. This is kind of a challenge category. Uh, sign, bash, and stomp are all abilities that are going to be acquired throughout the game normally, but we're going to be skipping those, and it's going to make it quite a bit more difficult to traverse through the world. Uh, Ori in the Blind Forest is a Metroidvania, which means it's a platformer, pretty heavy emphasis on exploration, and in particular, we're supposed to be finding all of these skills that gain access to new areas of the world for us, and we are going to be restricting ourselves to not get those. Um, a lot of people think that Bash is like one of the most important skills in Ori, so Smashy is going to be showing off how you can beat the game. Uh, one other restriction is we do have to get all of the world events, which means we have to get the keys to the three main dungeons as well as complete those dungeons uh, in order to make us do those restrictions and still play quite a bit of the game. Now this is normally where you would be getting Sign. That's like your basic attack. It's this little orb that follows you around. And you would think that we would need that, but we actually just came over to get some experience for a timed level up, and then we are going to be leaving, and we're going to get to see how Smashy is able to get around the restrictions of normally being forced to get Sign. So we're going to be coming over here and taking just a little bit of safety. We're going to be just damage boosting through these spikes and getting onto this save well, just in case she has some trouble here, because we're going to be doing a lot of damage boosting. Normally our only way to get rid of these purple thorns is to shoot them, but instead we can take advantage of the fact that after deaths, we actually get a small amount of invincibility frame. So by saving with our um, energy there and then 
uh, taking a death, we can like jump onto those little jump pads immediately while we're still invincible and actually get through them even though the purple thorns are still in the way. Now we're actually coming up to another trick very shortly here. We're gonna damage boosting through. Now the, uh, there are two keys that we're supposed to get to open a door that we need to continue off to the left, but we uh, those don't spawn in unless you have sign. But <clears throat> We're gonna use a little exploit here where if you place a save and then reload back to the menu, on the first frame that you load back into the game, the keys are actually still there. So by placing your save exactly where you would pick the, the key up and then loading back in, you get to um, get that, you get to get the key. And we actually just did a second one right there. Uh, Smashy used a technique called um, Save Anywhere, where she was able to get up that menu that you saw in front of the screen there. That's normally used to like level up abilities and stuff, but she was able to trick the game into allowing her to move while that menu was still up. And um, when you spend those points, that, then you get to um, basically save the game anywhere you want to. And she was, she was able to save right on top of that key, reload, and get it back. And now continuing on to uh, what will be our first skill, normally your second skill, we're going to be going to get wall jump, which functions pretty much how you would expect it to. It just allows you to jump up walls. Um, really like important for increasing what areas of the world we have access to. But in the meantime, we are going to be very carefully routing all of our experience. Now, when you destroy any like environmental hazards or kill any enemies, you're going to see little orange orbs like fall uh, fall out of them. Each of those we can pick up, and that's going to get us access to more some more experience towards leveling up. There are also going to be like some larger or orange orbs that she can find that will get them uh, get her experience as well. And you can't see it right now because she has her UI turned off because that allows her to skip a lot of the dialogue. But um, as the as every time that little orange circle that you can see down at the bottom right now fills up. That actually will get her a level up, and that's going to do a few things. It's going to get us more points that we can spend towards leveling up our abilities, and uh, it's going to refill all of our health and energy, which you also can't see right now because the UI is off. And uh, you also send out this large wave of energy that does damage, and that's actually going to be used a couple of times coming up, because without having picked up Sign, we have really no way of attacking. And so that level up is gonna be used to do damage to a couple of uh, enemies and like to destroy some environmental hazards that we otherwise have no available way to do. Now, because of how important it is to get those level ups in particular spots, it's really important that Smashy is counting all of the experience that she picks up and she knows exactly which sets of experience she needs to get to make sure that those level ups happen at exactly the right time. And she's uh, like keeping that in mind oh, yeah. and on top of doing all this difficult okay, I'm gonna wait, I'm just gonna wait for this. <laughs> This is a little bit of a tough jump here to get around just enough distance with your wall jump to be able to actually grab onto this ledge. Stupid. And it's extra tough because this little slime here is going to give you some trouble if you don't quite get around it. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I don't want to take damage from this slime. It's possible because that guy can do that. Yeah, and we also have some damage boosts coming up, so it's really important to preserve your health here. <laughs> um, it's uh, early on in the game here. Uh-oh. Well, uh, never mind. Never mind, I can't uh, push the rock yet. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to be avoiding a damage boost now. You can see she turned her UI on there just to show that her health is at one. Those little green circles there are your health, and the blue ones are your energy. Energy right now is pretty much just used for putting down save points, but later will be used for quite a lot of useful abilities as well. So that's uh, just keep in mind that you know even when you can't see them, that's uh, basically, they're still there, it's just that her UI has been turned off. And that's another thing that she has to be keeping track of this whole time. In addition to counting her experience, she is also having to tr uh, keep track of like how much health and energy has she has the entire time. Now normally we would have just damage boosted up those spikes there, but because of having taken a little bit of extra damage, we had to push that rock and jump up in, on, in a way that didn't actually end up taking damage. <clears throat> and you can see that that, um, that level up sent out that large energy wave, which allowed her to uh, destroy all of those brambles to get him out of her way, and refilled her health and energy, so she was able to do some damage boost to get back out of that zone there. And we have now gotten the wall jump ability that we needed, as well as some um, experience for level ups, and we're now going to be heading into an area that was added in the definitive edition of the game. This is going to be going, she's going to be going into Black Root Burrows, which is where we're going to be finding the dash ability in a few minutes. Now, dash is kind of like um, if you think of a casual playthrough of Ori, Bash is sort of like the defining skill, but for Signless Bashless Stopless, it's actually going to be Dash, because it's going to have a lot of really useful utility that we'll be getting to, into as it comes up, and we're going to be seeing um, a lot of really, really creative use of Dash, especially with some glitches we're going to get to see later on. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes we have to go through here. Blackroot Burrows, the gimmick of this area is that it starts off very dark. You can see you can barely see anything around here. 
and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go get this orb over on the left hand side and we're supposed to carry it through and restore the light to this area and um, there's a little bit of an interesting mechanic to it with the signless bashless stopless run normally when you pick up this orb or sorry when you put this orb down <clears throat> the way that um it will come back to you is it will come to the location that sign is at but this is signless bashless stopless we don't actually have sign okay so uh oh lost a little bit of time here we took an unfortunate death and had to go back to the entrance so that's uh you know it's not what we're looking for but um smash is a very skilled runner and definitely like more than capable of getting a good uh, clean later half of the run to make up for this time loss uh, so as i was saying that. what's that so that guy can do that unfortunately yeah, you can really see how difficult some of this early game is because of the fact that we don't have the, uh, the laser attack from Sign. Like, we actually have no ability to attack these enemies whatsoever. We just have to avoid them. There's no other option. So you're going to see right here the save point that she placed down. Um, that's the location that this orb is going to try and come to. As I was saying earlier, normally it would come to where Sign is, and Sign always follows you, so you can just kind of stand and wait for the orb to come back. But because we don't have Sign, the game doesn't really know where to put the orb, so it just has to go to where your saves are. And again, saves use up energy, so we do have to kind of pretty carefully route where we put those saves to be able to get the orb to come back to us. But we don't want to be carrying the orb all that much because you can see how much like slower and limited our movement is as we're hopping through it like this. All right, here she's being very careful to manipulate some cycles on these platforms. You're gonna see her stop here for just a second. By standing here, she makes the cycles on this platform she's about to jump on here and in the next room line up a little bit better. A little bit tricky here. Again, we can't actually shoot any of these enemies, so she has to be really careful to dodge all these shots. The shots are like really awful about knocking you back when they hit you and they can knock you off those platforms. And you can see they just like float up and down really, really slowly. And if you get knocked off, it's like a like an eight second time loss and it just it feels awful when it happens. Mm -hmm. So we're coming towards the end of Black Root Burrows here. Just a couple more, a few more platforms we got to float across here. And then we're going to be placing the orb in that statue underneath us. <gasps> oh no, so that's we actually, um, I don't know if I can get this back. Hold on. Let me just try here. I think this will work. Wall jump didn't go off. Hold on. I think I can make this okay, so what we're worried about here is, as I mentioned, we can't get the orb to come back to us unless it's where the save is, and we need the save to be here for some stuff we're going to be doing later. So we had to place the save and get the orb to come back down, and now we're going to have to retry this climb here. And hopefully, on this second jump here, we can uh, get the wall jumps to go off and get up to the lever. Unfortunate to have had to take that time loss. All right, looks like she's got it cleanly this time. Very nice. Gets the lever just... pulled. Was that? It's fine. It's fine. It, it'll come back here. So, yeah. I've actually just I, I had to do this on the fly. I've never actually done this. So very good presence of mind from Smash there to think about the it. fact that <laughs> the save needed to be placed here so that she mm. could both get the orb to get back up the first time and get it to come down here so she could place it in the pedestal the second time. That really shows off like the level of experience she has with this category because with these weird rules. A lot of runners, when they find themselves in these situations like that, could very easily just get way too confused and, to, uh, and make a mistake and uh, find themselves like unable to progress and have to load a backup save. But we have made it through. Uh, just a few little little bit of scuffed mistakes, but you know, absolutely can still make up a lot of this time with a good clean play later on. We have now gained the dash ability, and we're going to be seeing this constantly. You can see every time you press dash, she just gets to zoom forward. And this is the uh, least upgraded version of it. We're going to be doing a couple of important upgrades. We're going to be upgrading it so that we can do it once in the air. And we're also going to be upgrading it so that we get a more powerful, faster dash um, that you have to spend energy on. Uh, we don't have enough points to level up and get that just yet, but we're seeing a uh, pretty difficult trick right here. She is using this boulder to push her out of bounds just under the floor there and placing a save. And then she's going to go and she's going to activate this teleporter for later as well as just grabbing a little bit of health we're going to need for damage boosts later. And now she's going to come back down to that save she just placed and reactivate it and load her game. And that's going to put her back out of bounds. And we're actually going to be flipping through the floor into a later area of the game called Moon Grotto. And there's a really important bit of movement coming up here. After she drops to the floor and into Moon Grotto, and she gets it very nicely. She's gonna wait and then dash through here and try and get some extremely precise movement here and skip a cycle. Oh yes! <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough how difficult it is to get in there. 
that is like you you need just such clean movement to uh to make that cycle and cut in there that damage you just saw was intentional because she's trying to do a trick called a ghost door. She's gonna place the keys in the door here and uh, save and then go oh, and uh, because of those damage boosts, she was able to die very quickly and it opens the door up without having to watch the animation. Just tiny little optimizations like that are what make the difference between good and great runners of Ori and the Blind Forest. So we have now gained the double jump ability, kind of similar to wall jump. It's basically what you see is what you get. Double jump just means you get to jump a second time in the air. The one of the important things about it in Ori specifically is that it's like a it's a very um, like floaty second jump. It's more about like keeping you in the air for a while and getting a lot of horizontal distance than it is uh, vertical. You know, it does give you a little bit of extra vertical distance, but um, mostly it just like gives you the ability to stay in the air for a very long time, especially once we start pairing it with like our air dash and things like that. Another tough trick coming up here shortly. To get back out of Moon Grotto here, we're going to be skipping a large portion on the left-hand side by doing a tough little jump off the wall here. Very nice, very nice first try. Looking super clean there. Almost jumped into some spikes. And yet another trick coming up here. She's going to be saving or dropping a save and then walking into a cutscene. And then after this, she's walked into the cutscene, she reactivates the save point and um, reloads her game. And that sort of muddies up the game a little bit because it's already flagged the cutscene as having started but then when you reload in, um, like it believes that the cutscene is already finished even though you didn't watch it. So it saves time watching the cutscene and also prevents some like dangerous boulders from falling down that shaft there and um, makes it a lot easier to get through here without taking damage. And yet another trick coming up shortly, we're going to be using that, um, that trick where we make a save and then walk into a cutscene and then reactivate the save and reload just right here. We're doing that because normally when you walk across that bridge, a cutscene plays where the, the bridge like breaks and you fall all the way down here. You can see the camera's trying to follow where the cutscene's supposed to be. If we watched that, we would have to climb back out of Moon Grotto a second time. But thanks to that trick, we actually were able to stay out of it. We're making a quick little detour here to get a energy cell. We're gonna be gaining a total of five health and four energy by the time this run is over. And that is the bare minimum we need. We need five uh, for damage boosts right at the end. We end the run on literally one HP. If, uh, so we have to get every single one of these. And all of that energy is gonna be used for a combination of making saves and <laughs> a little bit of extra safety there. Yeah. Yeah, we're about to level. You're about to level up anyway, so there's really no reason not to uh, drop the save there for a little extra bit of safety. Quick little detour to collect a little bit of experience. Um, so she is actually still counting all of the experience she's picked up because at the end of the run, when we go into um, well, it's so casually it's the first dungeon, but in this run it's going to be the last dungeon, the Ginso Tree. We actually had do not have the ability to solve one of the final puzzles unless we level up at an extremely specific time. So the entire run, she's going to be keeping track of her experience and making sure that we level up on a specific enemy at the very end of the run. So she's actually having to keep track of that literally this entire way. Um, we're actually very close to that dungeon right now, but we are not going to be going into it right now. Um, we're just going to be coming and getting this teleporter underneath it. We're going to need to come back to it later, and we're also just kind of like in the area, so it's, we just want to go ahead and activate it now. And we're also going to be using it for some... Uh, Actually, do you warp this place off this one? No, Never. it's the uh, um, BRB one. Okay, so we're just we're just getting it to come back later, basically. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> So you can see we have teleported back pretty close to the entrance, or where we started off the run. Got a damage boost through here a little bit more, but the dashes do make it a little bit easier because we can just like blast through here so fast. Uh, we're back at the uh, start of the game because we are going to be um, collecting some cells and then heading on to another area of the map off to the left. Now first things first, we're going to do a trick called the duplication, where we're going to put a key in this door, and then um, we're actually going to take an intentional death there. And we took it that far enough away that the game, um, it like it both gives us back the key that we had in the door, but also puts the keys back in the world. So we're actually essentially able to like double the number of keys we had. Like the, we put one key in the door, but we actually got two back. So um, we were able to, even though we only had one key, we used that trick to get a second one and go through the door here. And we're gonna be um, coming into this little area right here, which is full of keystones. We're gonna be getting a couple of those, as well as an ability cell, which we're gonna be used for some of those level ups later. And then we're gonna be continuing on through a keystone door and collecting our next skill, which is gonna be Charge Flame. Um, Charge Flame is pretty interesting in the Signless Bashless Stopless run, because similarly to how the uh, orb mechanic from earlier worked, 
Normally, charge flame where the, where the, it's like a, it's like an explosive blast you charge up, and it damages everything around it. The way that it's supposed to work is like the sign ability that follows you around is where that explosion comes from, but we don't have sign. So the way the game kind of defaults to working is it considers sign to be wherever your save point is. So we're going to be using it for a couple of tricks where we make a save in a specific spot and then um, use that charge flame to like redirect uh, other like shots to, to hit barriers and things like that. We'll talk about that more as it comes up, but we've got a little bit of a cutscene to watch here. Kind of a nifty detail. Um, this cutscene normally is supposed to have sign in it, but because of the fact that we have never actually picked her up, uh, it doesn't appear in this cutscene. You should be seeing sign on the screen right now, like showing on the map where we're supposed to go, but uh, actually doesn't appear at all here. It's pretty neat. Yeah, the only only time you don't see sign. Is yeah. So we're using the save anywhere ability here. Um, we're gonna be. Oh, um, there she is. Okay. <laughs> she does talk to you, even if you don't have it. It's kind of weird. So we've got the Save Anywhere menu up here so that we can skip the cutscene on this tree. It's very important that we do that because there is a barrier off to the right. It's like a blue breakable wall. And um, normally we would have to break through it with Charge Flame, but again, we would have to like drop saves down to have a, sp a spot to Charge Flame. But when we are when we've glitched the cutscene and can move during it, the, the door is actually not loaded. So we were able to just um, like uh, use that trick to move during the cutscene and just walk through the door fast enough that it's not in the way. And we got back over here to where the save we, we left from earlier was, and we got to use our charge flame to break through that. Very nice. Um, just taking us a little bit more of a detour here to collect uh, one more ability cell. And heading off to the left. We're now going to be heading into Valley. Now, if you're familiar with the game, you might be wondering how we're going to get into Valley, because you're supposed to have the stomp ability to stomp a peg to uh, open up a door here. We are instead going to be, since we can't get stomp, we're going to be using a trick called Terra Clipping. Essentially, she um, got just barely away from a wall and then dashed back at it and saved at the exact same time. And then after, um, then she would leave, like the, it would leave and unload the area and die. And when she loads back in, she's dashing so fast on the reload that um, like the wall doesn't have time to load back in in her way. So she's able to dash through the wall and get out of bounds. And then we just saw yet another really, really cool trick there called rocket jumping. This is an application of the dash ability. We've upgraded it to the point where we can spend energy to make our dashes more powerful. And these dashes will home in on enemies. So what we essentially did there was we dashed at that enemy above us and then canceled the homing by jumping. And uh, what it ends up doing is just like, it has a hard, it, like the game doesn't really know exactly what to do with that and instead of decelerating you you just rock it up into the air now another really cool trick here we are essentially trying to redirect the spider's fireball shot at the rocks here very nicely done there's so many tricks so fast it's hard to I know, I'm sorry. It. but anyway You're doing a good job. What, we, what we were doing there <laughs> is we were using that charge flame ability to redirect that spider shot at some breakable rocks that we need to be able to progress the game and normally you would have to use the, um, you would have to go up there with Bash to be able to break that, but we don't have any way to do that right now. So we used that spider shot and we, re we dashed away from it so that it unloaded some terrain that was in the way and the spider shot was able to break it. That's a really, really hard trick. Like aiming it with charge flame is so difficult and to get it that quickly is like, just really, really impressive. I can't emphasize enough how difficult that trick is. Get another rocket jump to get up to this save well here. Very nice. We're now going to be going into one of the cooler areas of the game, in my opinion. We're going into Misty Woods. Misty Woods is kind of like the Lost Woods from Zelda, where the terrain is constantly shifting. And that's going to be very important in this run, because um, we'll kind of get into it a little bit more later. But let me just say now, to keep in mind, that all of the, all of the various sections of Misty Woods, they move around, so they're all kind of in the same location. They're just unloaded right now. So we're going to go through the start of it, but we're actually not going to be finishing Misty Woods. We're going to be clipping out of bounds, but it's important to remember that the, the deeper part of Misty Woods we were in will still be loaded for later. And that's going to be used for a, uh, a really cool glitch that we'll be seeing later on. But for now, we're just coming in far enough to get to this spot right here. Now, this is an important spot because if you were to zoom the map of the world out a long way, you would actually see that we're fairly close to the second dungeon of the game, which is Forlorn Ruins. And we're going to be able to use that Terra Clipping uh, glitch where we dash through an unloaded uh, wall. We're going to be able to use that to get out of bounds here. Where basically you're going to see her 
um, go and place a, he's going to get up against this wall, dash into it, and save at the same time by spending that point, and now get far enough away that that wall is going to unload, and then she's going to go kill herself on some spikes here. And if she loads back in, voila, out of bounds, no problem. She's still going to keep this up because we want to be able to spend a point for later, but she is now out of bounds and is falling towards the second dungeon, Forlorn Ruins. And she's as soon as she gets uh, close enough, she's going to float, and bam, we are in Forlorn Ruins. And not only in Forlorn Ruins, but we are at the <laughs> final room of it where we can start the wind escape. And it's important that we come do this because part of the category rules is that we do the escapes of all three dungeons. And um, unfortunately, we're not actually going to be seeing the wind escape because the event does count as being done as soon as you've activated this. And rather than do the wind escape, it is much, much faster. Just wait until we see a certain part of this cutscene here. And as it loads out, we are going to spend that point, which saves the game, and reload. And wind escape completely skipped. We are now outside in an earlier part of the Magically outside. Magically outside, yes. So unfortunately, no wind escape, but keep in mind, like, so as far as the category <coughs> rules are concerned, we have completed the wind escape now. So now we're going to be setting up another key duplication with some intentional deaths on this door here. And it's really, really nice to key dupe here because the, uh, this door allows you to put up to four keys in. So you can well, three. well, three when you duplicate. So you can duplicate up to three keys at a time, and it's very fast to take a death here. Now we're using a, a trick similar to save anywhere, this is teleport anywhere, where we're going to start warping towards a uh, one of the other save wells, but the game needs ability to move. And by getting on that wall there with the Forlorn Ruins anti-grab mechanics, you can see we've actually glitched our gravity. We are falling to the left now, back into Misty Woods. And keep in mind, I said that we actually have the later part of Misty Woods loaded. You'll notice that we are falling out of bounds and right to the end of Misty Woods, which we had loaded by being there earlier. This is the complete end of the Misty Woods dungeon. We were able to skip like two thirds of it by just loading it and then falling into it later. That's like one of the coolest glitches in the entire game. That death also intentional there because we were gaining the ability to um, essentially like pick up this orb without actually having to carry it and dash through there much faster. And we come over, uh, this is one of the other mandatory world events that we have to do. Um, this is gaining the Gumon Seal, which is the key into that icy forlorn dungeon that we were actually just in. Obviously, we're completely breaking the progression of the game we're normally supposed to have, because this is the key to get into the dungeon that we just left. But it is mandatory to do it in order to be able to um, complete the category. So um, we picked it up. We now have ourselves the forlorn key and the forlorn escape done. Um, there are still four more events. We've, we've also gotten the key into the water dungeon. So the three event remaining events that we have to do are we have to complete the water escape, we have to get the key to the fire dungeon, and we have to complete the fire dungeon. Those will be coming up shortly. We are heading into Sorrow Pass, which is one of the late game areas and pretty infamous among people who have known this. It's a very difficult area, a lot of difficult platforming, and covered in very high damage spikes. Every single one of those like thorny spikes you see does four damage. We only have five HP so we have almost no margin for error. That was another very tough trick that we did there. We used a rocket, uh, rocket jump to get that spider to shoot that roof for us. And um, you have to like time when you jump just right so that that shot is able to make it all the way up to that roof there and break it. And that, way, that avoids us going through the left side of Sorrow Pass, which is very, very long. Don't want to do any of that. Another ghost door here to get through that door a little bit faster, and now we use this spider shot what? to break this floor because we do not actually have the stomp ability it would normally need to Thank break you. that way. So <laughs> and thankfully that frog is there and can break it for us, and we're able to get through here to the charge jump ability. Charge jump is a charge like it's a jump that you can charge up on the ground, and it'll launch you up very high, very fast, and it's really useful because it can break through a lot of barriers. Um, like on uh, walls and roofs and things like that. Yeah, I okay. <laughs> All right, okay. so unfortunately we've taken some damage, so any of these spike hits are completely lethal. She is going through these spike corridors with the Save Anywhere menu up. Obviously a consummate master of this game, knows this area well enough that even like having to look at it through a menu that like blurs her vision, she's still able to get through there without taking any damage. And we are now just floating up to where the, uh, the key to get into the fire dungeon is. This is uh, where we find the sunstone up at the top here. And the reason we have the menu up is because we wanted there's a very, very long cut to get that sunstone here. But we can start it, uh, spend a point here to save the game, and then reload and completely skip out of the entire thing. Very, very nice to not have to watch this cutscene. So at this point, we will have completed four of our six objectives, 
and uh, as we talked about at the beginning, the rules are we need the six world objectives, we need, we need to not get bashed, we need to not get signed, and we need to not get stopped. We have successfully avoided accidentally getting any of those abilities, so looking good there. Just have to go collect the other two, um, uh, the other two world events. Now, completing the fire dungeon is actually, that's like the very final thing we do to end the game, so we'll be saving that for last. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go and we need to do the water dungeon. Uh, it's the uh, giant tree that we like got to a teleporter underneath earlier and didn't actually go activate. And I think um, Ginso is like a, a fan favorite among most people. It's got a very, very memorable water escape at the end that like most people who have played Ori casually, like the one big part of the game that stands out of their mind is the water escape. It's super, super cool. Unfortunately for speedrunners, a lot of times it like, it becomes just routine and very, very easy when you do it with all of your normal skills. But Silent Bash with Stompless, it's like actually pretty difficult because this, uh, this dungeon in here is where you get Bash, which is an ability that lets you like grab onto environmental objects and enemies and launch yourself off of them. And so the, all of the like architecture in here is designed to test your ability to use Bash. But obviously we don't have it and we won't be getting it. So the water escape, we're going to be having to use our abilities in pretty creative ways to get around the fact that we don't have that Bash ability. And the end result of it is that we're going to have to do some pretty like dangerous damage boosts and some pretty difficult movement to get through it with our current skill set. Again, uh, Silence Bash of Stompless is essentially like a challenge category that makes the game a lot harder for itself. And it's like a cool showcase of how versatile the movement abilities in Ori in the Blind Forest are. The fact that like... Dang it. Uh oh. It's okay. Okay, so she's trying to use her charge dash to redirect the shot. We need to use it to break that barrier there. And she did it just a little bit late, so it bonked into that redirector there. It didn't quite work out. We have a mini boss here, which we're going to try and destroy immediately. Unfortunately, didn't quite one-shot it, but, you know, blink and you miss it. Even having to take a second shot at it there, that boss was destroyed so quickly. That damage was coming from her charge jump ability and her charge dash ability, just, like, completely wasting that boss instantly. A couple more keystones we're collecting for our two last final doors that we have to have here. I do want to remind you that we it's really important that we get our experience to a super precise number because we want to be leveling up at a, at like at a very specific spot to make the trick work. That was the battery that we just passed by there. Not going to be picking that up. Don't need it. Obviously breaks the rules of the category. But keep in mind, like, or, uh, Smashy has been keeping track of her experience the entire run. And she knows exactly how much she needs in order to make this trick right at the end work. So she's taking care to make sure to pick up a little bit of experience from just a couple of enemies here and there to get herself to the right amount. And when we get that next level up, it's going to have to go off at a specific time. Um, we're almost to the top here. We have one more little boss to kill. See ya. Absolutely destroyed. No problem. Obviously, you're not supposed to have that charging up ability here. But um, it just like completely wastes these bosses, no problem. Now this is where we want that time level up. So we're gonna be collecting. Um, we need to break through this little barrier right I here. One more, yeah, I do. Um, we need the. We need this experience right here, and then we want to level up off of the next enemy we kill. Oh okay, we're oh, so close. You can see she's on, just about to level up. Hold on. I'm gonna reload. Can I put him up here? Okay, we're reloading to set the front key positions. We need that level up wave to break bramble, like a bramble on both sides of this room off to the right here. So she's gonna kill that enemy, has the experienced chaser, level up, and you can see it breaks the, or the bramble there on the left and the right, completely preventing us from having to do that room on the right, which we actually do not have the ability to do with our current skill set. Super, super awesome use of uh, her skills there, and great job to keep track of her level up so close that she was able to pull off that trick. All right, time for the water escape. Now, Smashy is a very skilled runner in this category. Hopefully, they're not going to give her too much trouble, but, like, it is so easy to just, like, miss one tight little wall jump or one little, uh, like, charge jump or dash here. And you can see the water is chasing us. If it does catch up to us, it is an instant kill. And on top of that, we have all of these, like, thorns and enemies and stuff, all of which want to do damage to you as well. It's going to take just a second to allow that fireball cycle to advance a little bit, make it a little bit easier on yourself. You also have to avoid taking damage because we have some force damage boosts coming up here. Charge jump is really helping us get through here. And then attached to this spider here, we're going to have to damage boost on these brambles here. Very nice. And one more damage boost. This is like kind of the hardest part here. And she made it high enough. Very nice. Very, very nice. First try. That is much, much harder than it looks. Well done, well done. All right, so now that that's done, we are out and into the swamp area. This is normally where we're supposed to be collecting stomp next, but obviously can't get that because of the rules of the category. So we're just gonna be leaving off to the left, and the last thing we have remaining to do is go to the final dungeon. 
We're gonna have one more, <clears throat> excuse me, one more terror clip that we have to do here to get out of here because we don't have the stomp ability to get ourselves out of here. So we're going to set up our terror clip against that wall and go leave in the water, take some damage boost so that we can die on this bramble over here once we've unloaded that wall. Where's the fish? The fish are just not there. Where is the fish? That's odd. That's weird, okay. Off finding Nemo okay. or something, I guess. <laughs> So anyway, we are now heading back. Um, oh, I don't have any. Oh, no energy. You know what? We're crystal, just gonna save here because I, I can get stuck in this cutscene. Okay, we're fine. All right, so we're just headed back to a teleporter so we can go towards the area of the final end of the game. Now we're going to be using a warp displacement using that teleport anywhere trick. This is pretty cool. We're going to. Um, basically glitch out our menus so that we can gain the ability to move while teleporting. And this is a really, really cool trick. Warp displacing is like super nifty. We're gonna, we're gonna, um, while we're warping right now, we're actually gonna get on this moving physics object and we're gonna make sure we've like skewed our angle as the teleport goes off. Yeah, and it's gonna teleport us to the right wrong there. place. Okay, it's uh, supposed to have taken us to okay. a warp pad, uh, but because we skewed like what we were standing on, it actually like <laughs> skews where it takes the teleport to and it takes us right to the entrance of the final dungeon. I was hoping I could get a jump off before that happened, but that's okay. Yeah, the, the angle on the swinging like log there wasn't quite right. Third time's the charm. Let's see if we can get this set up for the warp displacement just right. This is so so difficult because she has to like while that map is up, she has to move and get in, and get into position so that she can die to set the glitch up. So she has to know it well enough to um, to do that movement line. And warp displaced right to the entrance of the final dungeon. Very very nice. Those uh, first two attempts cost a little bit of time, but fortunately they're fairly quick to set back up and we are now on to the final dungeon. Now, you might be looking at our time versus our estimate and be worried about having to do this final dungeon. Fortunately, we have a trick up our sleeve for that. We're not going to do the final dungeon at all. We're going to do a trick called Door Warp, where you um, basically load back in and you enter the door on the very first frame the game is loaded back in. And uh, don't ask me why, smarter people might be able to answer, but instead of taking you through the door, it like warps you down into the left, all the way to the end of the dungeon. So we now just like get to completely skip the entirety of the Horu dungeon and start the final scene. This is the antagonist of the game that we have not seen, I don't think, at all in this round. It doesn't skip all the testing in a weird order, but we have to run away from her during this like fiery lava escape. Now we have to avoid all damage because our health is just barely enough to do one mandatory damage boost with each other. Also, because we don't have stomp and bash and things like that, we are not able to break through a lot of these barriers the normal way. So every single energy we have has to be used to use our charge dash ability to break those barriers. So we have absolutely no margin for error here. These fish are terrifying because we have no extra health and got through them very nicely. Oh, so good, so good. And one final little room here we've got to do. We've got to avoid spawning Kuro, which if we move too far to the right, will spawn in and kill us. All right, and escape complete. Nicely done. Super awesome. All right, so that's a super difficult escape. Well, well done to have gotten through that the first time. It is not time quite yet. We have a little bit more cutscene to do. The only remaining inputs of the game are holding right. So uh, we still have a little bit of time before it's actually called. But, um, you know, basically the run is over at this point. There's nothing that actually needs to be done at this point. So, uh, Smashy, I'll let you call time as it comes up. Yeah, I will. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I didn't say anything. I was trying to focus. This is a hard, hard category. Like, um, anybody who saw this and was, like, interested in Ori and the Blind Forest speedrunning, I highly encourage it. Like, there's a ton of good resources. Very, very friendly community. It's a very satisfying game to get better at. Mm, there are categories that are much, much easier than this one to get started with. Like, I would not recommend doing this as your first one. But uh, it's a really cool category and could definitely use some more runners. So if you get into it and you decide you want, like, a challenge category, this is, like, a super good one to look at. I, I definitely recommend it. Time will be coming up shortly. I don't know what's call it out for you. Yeah. Well done. 14, I have a 3615 online. Yep. So. 
I, I think I speak for chat when I just say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was intense. I'm, 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 so, oh, wow. That's, I'm, I'm at a loss for words on that run. <laughs> well, I think I you said enough words for all of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the event to catch my breath there. There's so much to talk about during that run. There's like so many glitches and tricks going on and stuff that it's like, it's hard to fit it all in. But uh, there's good like resources out there for anybody who's interested in learning this. And I think I uh, definitely speak for Smashy, but like most runners are more than happy to help people out if they're interested in learning yeah. this. So I know you mentioned where if people are interested in uh, the run, where they can go. If they're interested in, in uh, checking out either one of you, where would they go? Uh, so mine um, on Twitch, it's Smashy SR. Um, that's that's where you'll find me mostly. So. And uh, Roos SR for me. I don't really stream this game much anymore, but if you hit me up, I'll like be more than happy to help out with anything I can. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, I guess along the lines of um, if anybody's interested in this route or if Ori in general, um, you can go to uh, speedrun.com. Uh, slash Ori underscore DE and um, a link to the Discord is in there and there are so many helpful people on that Discord. People will jump at the chance to, to help you. So just ask any questions you want, you know, if you're interested. So that's it. Alrighty. Well, thank you both so, so much. I'm probably going to hop onto that Discord here in a little bit. <laughs> uh, if you didn't see in chat, this is one of those games where for the past couple of years I've been itching at wanting to speed run so oh, yeah definitely yeah and so don't forget if you missed any part of this show or any of the runs from awesome games on quick 2020 online you can uh go to our youtube at youtube.com slash games done quick and you can see an archive of our live shows and don't forget that tomorrow at 7 p.m eastern we're going to have a special edition of the first step where we're, we will be having a guest runner alongside Jay Hobbs, who will be playing through Cyber Shadow. And I've actually, I've played Cyber Shadow. It's such a fun game. I can't wait to see the speed run of that. But don't forget, wow, while the bargain bin may be done for this night, we're not done with games tonight. We got speed runs from the crypt coming up. And I know, I believe it, it was Silent Hill 4 and Resident Evil 4 are on the docket, plus more games to come. So we're going to take a small little break real fast you get to uh, let you all get up, stretch, hydrate, maybe get a snack or two, and then we can all come back for speed runs from the crypt with our host, Ekdysis. I can't wait to see this show. Thank you all so much for enjoying the bargain bin, and stay tuned for speed runs from the crypt. <laughs>